Welcome, everyone, to the finals of the 2024 Pokemon Let's Go Any Percent No Mount Skips Tournament. My name is Sajay. I am joined uh, by my wonderful commentary team of Yozarian and Dynam. We started with 30 competitors. We are down to our final three. Uh, these three have played through four rounds of Swiss plus an additional semifinals match. So we are now left with our final three competitors. Uh, New Amber, Headstrong, and Thomas Patrick WX. Uh, this is a very stacked top nine, guys. And uh, I think these are the three best from that top nine. Yeah, we can see the top seeds advance from each of those brackets. So I think we're in for a really exciting race today. Yeah, and each of these runners are like at like at their best game are like three double o sub three potential headstrong notably uh recently just pb'd with a three double o xx and she's like she's been so consistent it was just only a matter of time for, for her to like reach that point so like these these three runners like oh my gosh i am so ready for for <laughs> some let's go action today Yeah, everybody in chat seems pretty hype. It seems like the the champion music plus the the cool title screen made everybody pretty hype. So, yeah. shout out to Saija, you were the one to to make that, right? Yes, I made that title cool. screen. I did, I did all the graphics for this tournament, including the the cool title screen. Yeah, shout out to Saija for doing such a wonderful job with all the presentation. All right, well, our runners are getting into the game, so we're going to find out our first uh, important question. Which Joy-Con do we pick? Uh, Amber is right Joy-Con. Oh, best Joy-Con, right Joy-Con. That is correct. Nice. You know, uh, we have Boy Eevee, Girl Eevee, and Boy and... Pika. Mm -hmm. One day, sometime down the line for, like, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee tournaments year, like, 15, we're gonna see somebody whip out the Pokeball Plus, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I not think, today. I think Etiquette did a run of that, and he said it was pretty terrible. <laughs> sounds sounds like a time. <laughs> I uh, I did use the Pokeball Plus when I played this game casually, and uh, I I can say it was quite an awful experience. And we are officially off. So in about three hours, we will have our champion, hopefully in less than three hours, because we'll see three sub three times, which would be really cool. I think someone's going to sub three here, because I think these runners are just going to go nothing hold back, no safe strats, just blasting through as fast as they can, because they're all so good, um, at least for the last hour or so. So I think there's a pretty good chance of a sub three today. Girl three and two girl ones. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm expecting an exceptionally good showing from, from all of our runners today. I feel like in terms of just like attributes of runs, like Amber has been like very consistent across the board. Headstrong has been the like the the lone soldier of always doing two C safe strats, and that has like time and time again she's proved that has worked for her and her strategy. And T Pat, like not to riff on T-Pat at all, I feel like T-Pat has faced like a lot of adversity and a lot of runs, and every time that he does, he comes out a little bit stronger every time because he just knows how to take all of those bad situations and turn them into like basically like mitigating time losses as much as he can and learning from various situations like that. So every every runner here is going to be so solid coming out of this race. I think out of our three runners, I think Headstrong is actually the only one not in the sub three club, but she is very, very close to the sub three club. I think like her BB now is like a 300 like 20, I think. I think she might 20 x 13, I think. 300 13, yeah. She is very, very close to the sub three club. So um, all these runners very, very close on, on time.
So of our three runners, the only one we're going to get any kind of information off of here um, would be Amber. Um, Dynam, you're a Pika runner, so you'll know uh, Pika can come at a different CP number, which can give you a little bit of a hint as to what nature it is. Eevee just is always at, I think, 20, 26. Uh, that's correct. Uh, Eevee will always come in at a combat power of 27, whereas right. Pikachu can be at 27 or 26, just because of the way that the formula is calculated. Um, 27 will always be a neutral nature, which means it doesn't have a net plus or minus to any of its stats. Uh, but as we see on Amber's screen, we have 26, which means that uh, we will have a plus to a stat and a minus to a stat. There are 25 natures in this game. Uh, each of them will raise a specific stat by 10% in its growth and lower another stat's growth by 10%. Neutral natures uh, have the same stat in both, so they end up canceling each other out. Yeah, and the good thing with uh, Pikachu as well is that, uh, you know, in a, in a perfect world, we would always get something like Naughty or, you know, Rash or something that increases uh, a defensive stat and increases an attacking stat, but... Um, for Pikachu version, uh, a lot of the minus stats don't matter. Uh, Pikachu, these are special Eevee and special Pikachus. Uh, their base stats are very different from normal Pikachu and Eevees. Uh, the Pikachu, for example, has base stat, uh, I think it speeds like 120. It's like faster than like Latios or something like that. It's some, some dumb number. Um, I think it's actually the fast. It might be, I think it's like the second fastest Pokemon uh, in the game and just in general. I think only Mewtwo outspeeds it. Um, and, uh, so because of that, you don't actually care if you get minus speed. So you can take almost any Pikachu. Eevee, it's a little bit harder. You don't really want minus speed. Um, uh, just a couple fights later in the game that, um, Eevee would really like to have a, at least a neutral speed for. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to find out those natures pretty soon for Pikachu, but for Eevee, we're going to need to wait until we kill a little Caterpie in the forest. Um, though we can deduce Eevee's attack from the initial fight against Pikachu, we'll be able to tell with pretty good certainty uh, whether it's minus attack, neutral attack, or plus attack. Yeah, likewise for the Pikachu fight, uh, you can kind of tell uh, what stats your Pikachu has in terms of special attack and defense, depending on the damage rolls that you see for each. Um, but we'll be getting to that in about two-ish minutes. First, we gotta take a quick little trip up Route 1 to go grab a parcel for Oak from the uh, Viridian City Mart. Yeah, this is the first real yeah. challenge. They gotta dodge all the Pidgeys and Rattatas. Yeah, so it's actually a kind of a major change. This game is based on the original uh, Generation 1 uh, Yellow game. Um, in those games, you actually fight your rival immediately after getting your starter, and then you head up to Viridian City to grab the parcel. Uh, it's actually a little reversed here in this game. Uh, we're going to grab the parcel first, and then come back and then fight our rival. Two quick things I'm going to shout out here. One, all three runners left their stars behind by like leaving them behind the ledge. And two, uh, they all managed to talk to the... Uh, uh, Viridian City Mart person in a way such that it doesn't do a little turn animation, so it saves a little bit of time there as well. We love to see a good sink six minutes into the game. Heck, I love to see a good sink two and a half hours into the game, honestly. Yeah, two and a half hours in, everybody's on, you know, like Sabrina or something, that'd be, that'd be sick. That would be wild, and I'm all for it. All right, so yeah, all three of our runners about to start uh, the rival one fight. So this will kind of give us an idea of where the Eevees are at, um, and if the Pika has a minus special attack nature. Uh, you'll notice none of these runners uh, checked their stats. Uh, if you're doing like a PB attempt, or you know maybe just just learning the game, uh, you might check your nature directly after picking up your starter. If it's bad, you just reset. Uh, but in a race condition, uh, you might have a backup. Uh, in this tournament, you are allowed to have a backup of uh, just a neutral nature, um, but uh, these runners good enough to kind of have enough strats to where it, you know, they can take any starter and they're fine. Yazar, and how are the Eevees looking? Pika is looking very uh, standard across the board. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got neutral attack for both Eevees, which is yeah, great. both yeah, yeah, both uh, Eevees. I think we're done in three turns. Mm -hmm. I think. 
And Pika is almost always done in four turns unless you are a plus special attack and get a crit on one of your Thundershocks. Yeah. Amber unfortunately did get a paralysis uh, that is a little slow. Um, this game does have status lag where if uh, either your Pokemon or the opposing Pokemon is affected by a status condition, the game uh, just lags for some reason. We, we don't really know why. Um, so you might lose like two or three seconds on that, but not, not a big deal. And it only happens sometimes, right? Like, I can't tell when it does happen and when it doesn't. Yeah, it's like kind of random, like when it does happen. I'm sure there's like a method to the madness that we just don't know, but it's, it's one of those things that no one's really looked into. <laughs> the first major difference between these two games here, uh, we're actually going to see Pikachu level up here. Pikachu will get one extra experience fighting the Eevee, which causes it to level up to six here. We'll actually get to see what nature it is. It looks like it is uh, minus special defense and plus speed, which would be uh, naive, I believe. I'll just double check just to make sure I did take a screenshot of that. Uh, yes, that is naive. For the nature name, not for the actual nature. No outside Weedle for Headstrong. It's not a bad strategy. You don't get to see your strats, but you catch it. You get a little extra level. If you see a Pikachu or Bulbasaur, you can two see it. And you can deposit Weedle and catch a Kakuna. Um, so it's a little different flavor, but then you don't get to see your stats here. So it's worth uh, not doing that in these instances, I think. Yeah, and the other good thing about catching a Pokemon before the forest, too, is that uh, the game actually kind of has like a modifier for if you catch a Pokemon before entering Viridian Forest. Uh, it kind of makes it a guaranteed catch uh, with one controller. Um, that goes away immediately as you enter Viridian Forest. So uh, it's good for if you want to catch something on uh, Route 1 or the, the route right before Viridian Forest, or if you want to head over to the Pokemon League and, and see what's over there. Um, I don't even think I went on that route casually. <laughs> oh, Headstrong with a Metapod encounter just kind of spawned on her foot. Uh, I didn't quite catch the EV natures, but I did see a special defense AV go into Headstrong's EV, whereas T-Pat, I believe, got an attack AV on, on his side. Yeah, so Headstrong is actually uh, lonely, right? right? Oh, if it was a special insane. defense... Yeah, 16 attack, 18 special defense, 13 defense. So it's minus defense for sure. And then if it was, yeah, lonely, that's nice. Nice. Um, and T-Cat oh. is oh. Well, neutral. In chat. t -Pat's neutral with an attack AV. So actually that's pretty great for the EVs. Both of them have good attack. None of them have minus B, minus special attack or anything like that, so. Great news for the two EVs. Mm -hmm. Both Headstrong and T-Pat getting uh, Pikachu. Um, so Pikachu can spawn in Viridian Forest, just like in the original games. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for Pika version, uh, that's not very helpful. Uh, Pika will get some kind of bonus catches later, but uh, we do need to get to 50 Pokemon in our decks to enter Koga's Gym. And uh, uh, getting a bonus Pikachu catch here is very good for both the EV runners. Yeah, interestingly, both EV runners picking up Pikachu, also, both EV runners also opting to just 1C this Pidgey fight. This Pidgey can be a little bit trolly. It does like to use Sand Attack, and that's a special attack AV going to T-Pad's EV. Neutral, but very well-rounded in terms of offense so far. Um, some some runners will opt to 2C this just because Pikachu can one-shot this uh, Pidgey with Thundershock. Uh, but both runners playing Eevee just fine through this this trainer fight. Speed Eevee for Headstrong, too. These Eevees are pretty freaking good. <laughs> yeah, where are these Eevees on my PB at times? <laughs> okay, Amber and T-Pat going for their first bug. 
Yeah, this bug comes in at a nice level 7. Uh, the lure that all these runners are using uh, maxes out the level of the Pokémon in any given area and increases that cap by 1. So this Weedle is going to level up into a Kakuna, and then two levels following will level up into a Beedrill. Same with the Caterpie that Amber is just now evolving into a Metapod. Uh, a very quick six overall uh, catches to head to our final goal, really, of getting to that 50 catch count to enter Koga's Gym. In the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see by each runner's nameplate, you'll have a count out of 50, and that's what is on each of these runner's trackers. As soon as you get to 50, you're good to enter Koga's Gym, which is the main requirement that this run is based around. Yeah, uh, Koga, Koga, you're required to have 50 Pokemon in your decks to get in uh, to get into the door and challenge Koga. Uh, every gym in this game has a requirement. Most of them are completed via story stuff, um, but some of them we actually have to do uh, some like inputs for uh, things like Brock's gym, for example, the first gym that's coming up. Uh, that would be we need to have a grass or a water type uh, in our party. Uh, it is impossible to get a water type in your party prior without like trading or something um, prior to this gym. So uh, all of our runners will be looking for a grass type as none of them have one yet. Might see some Route 2 roulette coming up here. Yeah. So, and by my, I mean, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Amber is walking out of this forest with two bugs and a Pika in hand and is hoping that they see a nice little bulbous thing. And they got uh, it's it. Not yeah, it's not glowing, uh, but this is a level 9 Oddish, uh, as opposed to a level 7 Oddish that they would have caught in Viridian Forest. As as I say that, T-Pat caught a Bellsprout, so T-Pat is ready to enter uh, the, uh, the Pewter City Gym. Uh, Amber, of course, picking up their Oddish. Pikachu leveling up to level 9 here, where it learns Double Kick. Eevee learns the same move at level 10. Uh, fighting type move deals 2 hits, 30 power each. Uh, Pika will not be used on this upcoming gym battle, but for Eevee, that Double Kick is absolutely essential to making it through that fight. Headstrong finds the Bell Sprout, and there's also a Glowing Rat, which I think he will get, but it's kind of a judgment call. Plenty of experience can help her, um, you know, make sure you have 15 before Misty. Um, and then you just catch Raticate later. But some people just wait for it, so we'll see what she does there. Yeah, plenty of experience, and she has a very good nature. But um, if you are level 13 for this fight on Eevee, you can actually skip a turn. Um, so um, sometimes it is worth it to go. You save a turn on, you get a catch, and you save a turn on Brock. I believe you get to skip a double, or not a double whip, a uh, double whip, tail whip on <laughs> on yeah. Brock's Onyx due to the damage boost that you get at uh, 0, 3, 5, and 8 levels that end in those numbers tend to allow you to get a little bit more damage in than other levels due to the damage calculation formula. Yep. So I'd say a pretty good start for all the runners. No uh, no big issues, no Pokemon not showing up. I think this is a great start that we like to see. Yeah, no breakouts either, to my knowledge. Uh, Headstrong had one breakout on the Pikachu. Ah, gotcha. That was Got the it. only breakout. Um, it, it went in on second ball. It looks like this is going to be like an 18-minute Brock for uh, everyone except Headstrong, but it looks like Headstrong's on pace for probably a 19 maybe 20 minute Brock, but uh, Headstrong will have a lot of catches uh, and will likely be uh, kind of overleveled as well. Yeah, like Yazarian mentioned before, uh, this glowing Rotata is going to provide a little bit more XP than a normal Rotata would. Uh, glowing Pokemon will grant a little bit more of an experience bonus. We'll see a 9.8 here. For Hoping for the 26.2. Yeah, exactly. In fact, that would probably be a little bit of a detriment to, to Headstrong due to some extra levels 
uh, that she wouldn't need. Actually, this is going to be a 17 minute Brock uh, for both players. Uh, T-Pad is going to be a high 17 Brock. Uh, 17 minute Brock is very good. I think like the average is like 18 minutes. It really depends on how many things you've evolved beforehand. Headstrong mm -hmm. is going to push some of her levels, uh, or like front load some of her levels now, and then uh, we'll have to see when Amber and T-Pat end up getting their bugs leveled up as well. It's like another special defense. AV for T-Pat, I believe. Don't mind me, I'm just operating three spreadsheets here, trying to figure <laughs> out <laughs> AVs. Someone's gotta do it. Yeah, I think Headstrong's like fine time-wise. I'm thinking about getting the potential second Moonstone uh, in Mount Moon. And there is a danger, at least in Eevee, if you fully evolve the bugs, maybe catch a Rattata, you find Pikachu, you find Ekans, then you're like too slow for the second Moonstone. But I think she'll be fine. Um, unless an Ekans shows up and then might be a little slow, but... It's not a big deal. You'd still rather have a good catch count and good experience than the chance that the second Moonstone in Mount Moon. Yeah, it always feels so good to evolve or get Butterfree and Beedrill both evolved before Moon. But at the same time, you're just like, do I make it for the double Moonstone at this point? Uh, the mm -hmm. good thing about Eevee is that uh, if you're pretty good on catches and you're pretty good on levels, you can pretty much opt to skip the Moonstone entirely due to you not needing a partner Pokemon that requires it. Mm -hmm. uh, Amber getting a little wild child on their screen. Mankey is one of the optional catches on, or rather bonus catches on Route 3 and 4, whereas Eevee only has the option for Ekans. Pika has both Mankey and Sandshrew available. Is he not actually going to go for this yeah, glowing rat here before, uh, just before Mount Moon? I've seen a couple runners do this. My assumption is that T-Pat is looking to evolve things and get them out of the party before Moon. So seeing a glowing rat, regardless of level, will probably end up pushing a bug or two over to its final evolutionary form. Let's see what he's looking to evolve here. Oh, that was a super wow. size. Wow, that's know. great. Yeah. So we're going to have to keep, it looks like we're going to have to keep the Metapod in the party uh, for attain one more level, but that's really, really good. Uh, entering Moon at level 13. The requirement to enter Misty's Gym is to be level 15 when you get there, so we want to leave Mount Moon at level 15, so uh, entering uh, about a quarter of the way through level 13 is very, very good. And it's nice for the extra experience. Not that I expect it to happen to these runners, but if you're kind of just playing along, you don't get any glowing Pokemon, you miss like one catch, you're not going to be 15 in time. Amber like, going just... for Moon? Wow. I like I'm this. Onyx. I like Moon Onyx. It's not lured, so I guess it's... It's still level 8, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be easier to catch because it's not lured, which is good. Got a nice cool. throw on yeah. it too. That's, that's yeah, like it, ball throw. It's an 83% chance as is right now. So level eight onyx, not a bad idea. Especially considering that if Amber has paid attention to her AVs, uh she's only got one special attack AV in on her Pikachu at, from level nine. Uh we'll be able to see what else they've got up on their Pikachu sleeve when they teach headbutt, but uh this Pika is a little bit more tanky and a little less offensive than I think Amber would like. So maybe opting to get those extra levels, dump the party, and be on their way.
Keep Pat doing a quick check of the grass just to see if there is an Ekans. Uh, there or is a not. Charmander. Well, that's right, Charmander can spawn in the scrap, too. <laughs> the rare spawn Charmander could be there. Yeah. It's like a 0.5% like or something, but I have seen Charmander here once. It was awesome. Have we seen a, a racer catch Charmander on 3 or 4 this tournament? Nope. I feel like we have. <laughs> I just don't remember the instance. Uh, no, not, not this tournament. I got it in a race last year, um, but uh, this year I don't think anyone's gotten Charmander here. Uh, Charmander's like really hit or miss here because it comes at like level I think six or five. Yeah, I believe um, it's like unlured. It's a lot of levels to get it, but it is worth it to keep it to uh, the Charmeleon. It's just uh, it takes a little bit of party space. Yeah, I would say generally speaking, if you catch Charmander here, if you catch it on three, definitely dump it just because it can come in at a minimum of level three. Uh, if you catch it on four and it's higher level you might have an argument for getting it to charmeleon twenty nine attack for T Pat speed how many AVs is that according uh, to the spreadsheet attack <laughs> at what level? Thirteen. At thirteen is one A V in the cycle Oof. so far. That's good. I mean it's better than zero I guess. It is better than zero. <laughs> From what I have learned, uh, Eevee does like attack up to a certain point, and then anything past a certain threshold is cut, just kind of wasted. But anything going to special attack is like pretty good, especially for the mid to late game. Are we going to see a Chansey? We got three runners here. I sure hope so. I would love to see a glowing Chansey. Oh, always worth it. Oh, T Pat with a really good uh, spinner dodge there. She's oh, tricky. She can get you sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure going for an early Paris. She might have figured out she's too late for the Moonstone. Maybe. I don't know. That's the only logic I can think of. Um, otherwise, you would wait, pick up the Moonstone, try to catch one. Yeah, it'll depend on how many evolutions that Headstrong has here. I haven't paid close attention to that. Looks like it's just a Butterfree. Uh, for races, because we do a one minute countdown, sometimes races will opt to start their clock at uh, 11.33, possibly 11.32, because when that day rolls over, that's when uh, hidden items on the ground have that chance to respawn. Looks like uh, now at level 14 and a half, um, T-Pat should be good to just keep moving uh, along. So T-Pat should be good to get into, regardless of what happens, uh, the rest of Mount Moon, T-Pat should be good to get into Misty's Gym without problems. Yeah, that glowing Rotata on Route 3 pushed him pretty high up the XP ranks there. I think that Clefairy was his first catch, I want to say. Uh, yes, uh, one of the uh, Clefairy. Showing up on Amber's screen. Good old pink things. Getting the ball with an excellent throw. Very solid. Headstrong moving right along. Yep, looks like Headstrong is just going to say, yep, I already got the Paris. If Clefairy spawns, I'll grab it. Uh, kind of having a Geodude spawn on her. Uh, interesting to see if she That's, goes for it. She doesn't uh, have a Geodude she, yet. So. No, looks like she will be going for this Geodude. Uh, gets the good cycle, too, so... Swapping to greats also. Uh, one thing that I see a lot of people do is n if they run into a Paris first thing, they will opt to not swap to great balls first, uh, just due to the fact that double Pokeballs is like a 90% catch on a Paris. Uh, because you want to YOLO through the Paris, and when we mention YOLO through, it's just like throw on the very first available opportunity that you can get an excellence. Uh, so you don't really have that time to swap on the Paris if you want to get that first throw. Whereas on Geodude, the optimal cycle allows for it to attack first, and during that attack animation, you can bring in that Great Ball and then get the guaranteed catch on that Geodude. That T-Pat Moonstone. Moonstone as yeah. well. Very nice. 
So T-Bot opting to burn a Moonstone right now uh, to get to Clefable. I like it. Catching Clefable is bait. In a race, at least. Like, it's yeah, not you're a already good in catch the bag chance. and you have the menu anyway, so you might as well. If you have double Moonstone, it's kind of worth it just to burn it there. Yeah, logically, it also makes sense. Like, outside of the Clefable catch being pretty, pretty rough, uh, if you're catching Jigglypuff, you're going to Moonstone another Pokemon that learns the move on Evolution anyway. So might as well do it now, get it out of the way. And then when that Jigglypuff does come in, uh, you can just go right ahead, evolve it without a move to learn, and you're good to go. Strong starting the first Team Rocket fight. Lonely Eevee should take this Drowsy out no problem. Headbutt, same type attack bonus, boosts Headbutt's yep. base power by 50%. Lonely Nature, so plus attack, slams right into that Drowsy. I think Headstrong should be good on experience. She's like exactly level 14 right now with 1, 2... No, she's gotta catch mm -hmm. something else. For sure. The and Clefairy will do it, though. There, okay. There's the something and, okay. else. That'll work. <laughs> that that will work. I believe her lure is still up as well. Um, she didn't stay in the, um, in the uh, room It does very long. not look like it. Um, because since Eevee will lure earlier than Pikachu, right, like, those yeah. couple extra steps will, will make the difference. Uh, so Clefairy comes in at level 5 for Headstrong, but that should push her to be good on the level 15 threshold by the time she enters Cerulean City. Yeah, Pikachu for one average. Oh, go ahead. I was just I was just mentioning that Pikachu <laughs> got the one percent or the ten percent confusion by Drowsy, but managed to hit through confusion. So not not too bad for Amber, thankfully. Yeah. I was just gonna say for people's reference from the catches and stuff without the trainers for Eevee, you need to be like fourteen and a sliver, and then you'll hit fifteen when you kill Team Rocket uh, at the end mm -hmm. of Mount Moon. So. Like flat 14, you would still be a little short, um, which is why Clefairy or Glowing Pokemon are pretty important. You know Headstrong's attack? Uh, Headstrong's attack is currently at 34. Not bad. Uh, that, that's a okay range on the call thing, I believe. Yeah, I don't think it's guaranteed. Uh, it would be... Uh, only 8 out of 16 at 34. I guess because she's level 14, not 15. Well, yeah, it would be worse than that if she's 14. Right. Yeah, 50% uh, is worth going for. I always think attack and coughing first is right anyway. Because um, even if you crit it, it's like, absolutely worth it. Yeah, it basically prevents it from getting poison gas off which is just kind of a nuisance poison gas has it's like a pretty low accuracy move all things told uh but we don't want to see any any status any more status than we need to which is zero honestly let's just not see any status on our, on our starters here Headstrong through the super nerd fight. Gonna pick up a free fossil. And you might be thinking, oh, free fossil, that's two Pokemon right there. Uh, we're, we're gonna sell this fossil, like, immediately. The first opportunity, we're gonna sell this fossil. Uh, reviving a fossil is really slow. Yeah, it's about, like, 20 to 22 extra seconds to... To get that fossil revived uh, as opposed to like a normal catch. I know T Pat has recently been playing a little bit more safe with uh, keeping the fossil, grabbing the PP up, and such. I wonder what his strategy will be today, considering that it's the final race of the tournament. Like, will he forego that safety or will he continue to, to roll with it?
I feel like you gotta just play for the play for the win, right? Just sell it for the cash. Yeah. No backups, in my opinion, because that's almost gifting time to Amber and Headstrong mm -hmm. in a way. This coughing is stubborn. Yeah. Yeah, on Pikachu's side, you go... coughing, but uh, you do get to heal on that last turn, so uh, Eevee will be full yeah. HP and level 15. So uh, all three of our runners hitting 15 uh, before the end of Mount Moon. All right, I now have an accurate read on Headstrong's AVs. She has two in HP, one in attack, one in special attack, three in special defense, and three in speed. So despite being lonely, it's only rolled one in attack. That can be fine. It's not great, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's fine because yeah, you get the natural the boost. Special attack is, is good. She'll be all right. Yeah, what is, what is three speed AVs? get EV. Does it get to any decent thresholds? Uh, it does it's... mean you can outspeed the Pidgeotto on rival 3 uh, mm. at level 19, I believe. I believe you don't need to be 20. Gotcha. Yeah, there's Jeez. a few other fights where you can potentially outspeed. I don't know if 3 AVs would do it, but there's like uh, the Electrode and Hideout, for example. Um couple eradicates, things like that. Um, but I don't know if three speed AVs would do it on a mm. well, neutral speed. You're not hasty or something, but. Yeah, the, uh, you can actually outspeed uh, Sophia's Kadabra um, if you're high enough level and have enough AVs for it. Uh, that's like the big one, but you need a very, very good AV distribution uh, and a plus speed nature so to be able to do that. But that's like the really big one. So while the racers are teaching their special moves for their respective Pokemon, Zippy Zap to Pikachu, and then Bouncy Bubbles to Slew Slide, and Buzzy Buzz to Eevee, I did catch that Amber's attack stat on Pikachu is in fact 37 at this point in time, which means that they're going to get a guaranteed one shot on the Starmie at plus two, thankfully. So don't have to worry about any ranges on Amber's Pika end. Oh, it must be nice running Pika. <laughs> Never have that certainty with Eevee. Nope. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're just like, please don't crit me and kill me. Please don't burn me. Unfortunately, noticing that Amber is at level 16 with 37 attack, and I think that is only one attack AV within the cycle. So not something that Amber really wants to see here. Parsing out T-Pad and Amber's stars as we speak. Pika always. <laughs> Poor Psyduck. Just Can't catch a break. Uh... Well, just a plus two crit zippy zap to the face. <laughs> Thank you for being our setup, Potter Sida. Your sacrifice will be remembered. Outside of like glowing Chansey and Moon, is there a world where Buzzy Buzz plus two Buzzy Buzz KOs the Starmie? Uh, it crit. Critical hit. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Crit. Uh, it, the mo most of the time you get it on a. Uh, you got like glowing Chansey in Moon. Thankfully, no skulls here today, since Eevee has to tank a hit from Starmie due to not being able to one shot it like Amber's Pika did. Uh, Skull has that thirty percent chance to burn, and it will just waste time after the battle healing it. But very straightforward fight uh, with Misty for all three of our racers. And strong playing it safe and healing. For Eevee, you need to be at at least 13 hit points going into the bridge fights. Otherwise, you risk getting quick attacked to death by the rival. 
Um, there's some wiggle room if you have high defense or something, but generally you want to be at least 13 hit points, so having to heal there kind of stinks. But better safe than sorry at this point. Perfect sync from T-Pat and Headstrong. Pretty close. Uh, love to see that. Unfortunately, one thing that you yeah. do not like to see here is the the poison. That was there. Did Pico get poison on Amber's screen? Uh, I don't. Or am I looking at? I don't believe so. I don't think anybody got poisoned. Uh, I'm seeing a yes in chat. Amber must have opted to answer the poison due to the fact that this Eevee has quick attack. So if Amber had taken one more tick of poison damage, uh, Pika might have been in range for a, for a KO. So I respect the play here, and I'm expecting Amber to bring out the second controller with Oddish on the Sandshrew to get that Pikachu back up to a healthy amount of HP for the rest of this bridge section. Well, it looks like... Uh... It looks like he an an antidoted immediately. Yeah. So will we see the go for the 30%? Wait, what 30% are we going for <laughs> exactly? Uh, the, the headbutt flinch on the, uh, the sand tree. Oh, the cough. Or, no, I... Amber is 100% <laughs> going to take out that 2C and heal Pikachu. <laughs> Yeah, especially considering that Amber's Pika only has one attack AB in the cycle. Uh, that Pikachu is not one-shotting the coughing in any way, shape, or form, so uh, must heal effectively. Otherwise, risking Pikachu getting KO'd outright. Another Psyduck just suffering. Can't catch a break. Nope. Yeah, the bridge section is uh, kind of boring. Uh, the EV the EV version learns a super effective move for like everything on the bridge. Yeah, Amber pulling out the second controller for this fight. Uh, the Pika version, uh, this is like the only like kind of dangerous fight, but you can just uh, you can just two see this fight with Oddish and one shot the Sandshrew. Yeah, I feel like these trainers should just combine forces and just it could be one fight with all their Pokemon. Mm. Like, I mean, we, so much we better. Could be one people in the game, but <laughs> you know, like, why can't they like you know five be one us? You know, yeah. Be can you imagine after. if like we compartmentalize all six fights on this bridge into three double battles? But, uh, I don't know if that'd be faster or slower. Uh, oh, double battles in this game are pretty slow. It'd be less boring. Yeah, that, it would be less boring. That's for sure. I'm sure that there's some like heal strats or something that you can finagle with that. But yeah, Ooh, we how many fake outs? Fake out, fake out. Fake uh, out. One fake one. out. Two. Uh, two fake outs. And we're two for three. Yeah. Two coming two out three. of this fight a little bit faster than the rest. t at 40 special attack right now. Yeah, I do have updated AVs for both Amber and t now as well. So Amber's Pikachu is 2 HP, 1 attack, 2 defense, 2 special attack. Interestingly enough, uh, even though it's naive, 2 special defense, which means it has a special defense characteristic, and then 1 speed. t on the other hand, has 1 HP, 1 attack, 1 defense, Four special attack, one special defense, two speed. So that is oh. a that sounds like a fantastic EV to me for oh, a yeah. neutral oh, EV. Yeah. So yeah, four Amber, special attack is fantastic. Amber about to start the Team Rocket fight. Uh, so we will see one difference uh, here uh, in this fight. Um, so depending on where you talk to this Team Rocket guy at, uh, it changes the battle background. Uh, Headstrong is standing on the steps of the bridge, uh, so this should give her the bridge background, whereas everybody else walked in front of the guy, so they'll have the regular route uh, battle background. Doesn't really change anything, it's just kind of a weird little quirk of the game. Headstrong just really loves the Nugget Bridge section, alright? It's very underrated. <laughs> 
Spending uh, more time on Nugget Bridge. Ooh. Amber went for the range due to being level 18 on this copping. I I want to say that's like a 10 and 16 that they went for, and unfortunately didn't get it. Got poisoned by Smog. A little bit punished there. All right, so we want to see a Squirtle. Uh, T Pat gets nothing. Uh, I see a bug. Super late. Uh, now. And a cat. Ooh. Ooh. That's strong getting now. I like it. Uh, I believe that also means that uh, she will likely go for the bug as well. Uh, Amber also gets nothing. All right, well, no Squirtle. Yeah, with Sandshrew and Amber's party, I probably would have expected them to go for something on Route 25 if they saw one, just due to the fact that one Pokemon keep keeping your party and then dump two on the next menu for later, uh, just to kind of capitalize on party management and menuing. Uh, ooh, Headstrong getting Venonat here, and also a Glowing Psyduck. I wonder if she skips the Psyduck due to it being glowing, or catches it and tries to get DD up a little bit further. He was low level, so it's a real consideration, but then you're going to level up the Meowth and Venonat too, probably. Right. And this Venonat came in at level 12. Meowth I guess she's 14. 18 now, so yeah, I think she's fine. I think she can skip it. Yeah, I don't think you want to lock yourself out of Golduck this early. Uh, we did also see a uh, major difference between the two uh, versions of this game here. Uh, Amber picked up an Ether that's just lying on the ground, whereas uh, T-Pat and Headstrong, uh, they're both going to skip that Ether. Um, that is for, we do need PP management items uh, for later in the run, but uh, Eve, uh, Pika picks theirs up a little earlier to set up um, the God menu, uh, which will be coming up at the next shop. Uh, it just makes it so that our X items are just one input away, so it makes uh, menuing in battle a little bit faster. You know, a rumor I've heard about God menu is that somebody ended up typing it as... intended to type it as good menu, but they typoed it as God menu, and it has stuck ever since. So that is the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the running rumor slash legend behind why we call it God Menu, being able to go one input for both X special attacks and X attacks when we finish the purchase in Vermilion City for that. I think, uh, I think that's the lore we're going to go with. I think so too. I like uh, that lore. No, no score to the way back. Right? Yeah. Facts. Uh, unfortunately, none of our runners ditching Bill. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I would hope that in Grand Finals, <laughs> we don't see anyone ditch Bill. All these all these races are playing to the very best of their ability. Uh, we can save the ditch Bill tournament for another day, perhaps. No, uh, no Squirtle on the way back for Amber either. Time to reset. Yeah. That does mean congratulations to Iron, I believe, getting the the fastest ditch bill time recorded in the tournament thus far. Uh, we'll have to go to our uh, our organizers to confirm that, but congratulations, Iron. All right, so T Pat is going to head over to Vermilion City. Route 5 has Aww, just, it's just sort of a scenic camera. view, unfortunately. You see the Pokemon that you could have had. Um, it's very slow to jump down those ledges, so not a lot of people end up going down those. But that Abra would have been a pretty good extra two Pokemon for, for T-Pat. Yeah, it's a shame that you can't really know, like, what's down there before going there. Because if, like, if you know there's an Abra down there, it's worth jumping those ledges for the Abra, but... Uh, unfortunately, uh, kind of the way the route's set up, there's a fence blocking you, so you just see it and you're like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I know for a fact T-Pat is not opposed to the idea of Route 5 catches. He has caught a Route 5 Chansey, he, like saw it in the first grass patch, decided, all right, Route 5 is going to be my Route 6 today, and then ended up catching everything down Route 5 after that. Uh, but you really have to like see it early in order to capitalize on it, and that's not something that we see a lot of people do. Yeah, if it's in the last patch of grass, it's not worth it. Uh, it is a great place to see shinies, though, because then you can walk right by them and not not grab them. Mm -hmm. 
There's no chance of Shiny's running into you here. Nope. All right, T-Pat picking oh up my the God. two items. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of first grass patch Route 5 Chansey, uh, wow. goodbye. Uh, if you say it, they will arrive. Yep. The pink blob strikes again. Uh, T-Pat is going to go ahead and grab this Vulpix before getting the rare candy. Vulpix Blowing is a Vulpix. good one to catch first because it doesn't learn a move when it levels up. So that's likely the logic here. Mm. And probably going to redirect right back up for the the Route 6 rare candy that's hidden mm -hmm. in the upper right hand corner. Plus also then you only get the experience on oh. Eevee and Bellsprout versus... Good pivot for Amber. Oh man, that's so good. Yeah, I think if Amber had taken a single step forward from that position, that Am that Abra would have teleported away. But it managed to re redirect just in time, picking up an extra Abra and an evolution to Kadabra for, for their catch count. Very nice from Amber's side. Great throw, too. Mm -hmm. That was the nab and throw on the same cycle. Pretty great. T Pack getting the Jigglypuff. Very important. Easy Evo for that Moonstone. Right. Trying to fly away. <laughs> oh no. Really Pop is such a terrible Pokemon to catch. It is. You gotta just throw immediately, otherwise it flies away just like that. But it just still... wastes time when it floats away. It's so awful. Uh, Amber's still looking for Puppy. Yeah, we definitely want to see uh, either. Well, now that Amber has Abra, if if Amber can get a little bit extra experience onto the Abra. Uh, they can use it as a substitute for Growlithe in the upcoming battle section. Not having Growlithe kind of sucks because then you're kind of reliant on Rhyhorn for rides similar to Eevee. A Headstrong getting an Abra on her screen, very solid. Uh, and yeah, glowing Abra too as well. Interesting to see how much experience this will get Amber. I think this is okay for Amber. Abra should be able to level up through the rival 3 fight and then get into Kadabra be able to use Psybeam instead of Flamethrower that uh, Growlithe uses. Uh, walks into a rat. Uh, I think uh, probably does end up catching this, not actually. Have rat. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think Ember is just going for it. Yeah. Uh, who needs Growlithe when you've got Abra, honestly? Yeah. Uh, Headstrong feels the same way. Um, so just an interesting thing as well um, <laughs> on a... Uh, <laughs> On, on an Abra chain, that's quite funny. Uh, the item ball behind uh, that gentleman is a guard spec, and as you can see, Thomas Patrick just bought a guard spec. Uh, you can pick that guard spec up to buy like an extra, like X special or X attack if you want to. Um, it is a little slow because you have to walk to that side of the screen, but if there is something over there, uh, it's almost always worth it just to grab that instead of like uh, being able to buy like extra X items. Mm hmm. Uh, it's very rare you go over to that side of the screen, though. Like, incredibly rare. rare. I've never picked that up. I never go over that far. Yeah, it, it's incredibly <laughs> rare that you go over to that side of the screen. Uh, so Amber uh, is through. Uh, oh. Good good skip from everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, Amber being the last one to perform Vermilion Trainer skip, he just walked right through the lines of sight between the two trainers. Uh, taking a little stutter step approach, everybody has their own way of getting past those trainers, but as long as it works, it works. Yep. Uh, notably, the lure wearing off for Amber right as they enter the, the shopping menu here. If Amber were to have bought lures before that lure ran out, uh, it would have been a little bit of a time loss. There would have been a pop-up saying like, hey, do you want to use another lure? And then you'd have to confirm out of it. Uh, but just a little minuscule time save, but again, as we've seen time and time again, every little bit of time save that you can take here adds up over the course of the run. All right, T-Pat going to start Rival 3, uh, also known as Boat Rival. Level 19, does he have... He's got to have enough speed, right? He has 
I think level, he won Did you say three speed? speed? Just one speed uh, AV? He has okay. two speed. Yeah. Okay, then that's fine. Yeah, you just need one speed AV to outspeed this at level 19. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he figured or, that or out. Or B plus just... speed nature. I think plus speed nature at 19 always outspeeds as well. Yeah, T-Patch should be 42 speed here currently, and I believe that the Pidgeotto has 40 speed. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Technically, this is Rival 4. Uh, there is an optional Rival fight that uh, we do not do. Uh, we don't uh, speak about Rival 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, there is an optional Rival fight that you can do, but uh, we, we don't. There's like no world you would ever do it. Uh, I didn't pay attention to Headstrong or T-Pats uh, entry to boats, but Amber did get double turn skip, which is pretty cool. You can line yourself up to face uh, Trace there in a way such that you don't turn while facing him, and you also don't turn while uh, walking downwards. So, neat little optimization there as well. I love the artwork on the walls. Just pictures of boats. I do love me a good boat. I would love to find, like, full versions of the artwork that's in the game. Yeah, there's some pretty cool ones in uh, Mr. Pokemon's house, I think. I think there's a Lapras picture, I want to say. The, like, hand drawing of, like, a Lapras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then there's also, next to it's the one with Pikachu and Cubone, which is super cute. So you'll see here Kadabra filling the role of Growlithe on Amber's side uh, as that special attacker that hits hard. Uh, Kadabra will most assuredly hit any range that Growlithe might have. Uh, the only issue that I can see with this, and I'll s we'll see what speed Kadabra has as it levels up to 19 here. We want to see 48 speed on this Kadabra because of the, the Raticate that's coming up on Route 9, I believe has 47. And there is the possibility of, because Kadabra is a Psychic type, it is weak to Dark, and uh, could get one hit KO'd by a Crunch if it is not speedy enough. Usually Kadabra's generally very fast, hit very hard. We're gonna see 48 speed here, hopefully. Oh, 47. Um, oh, so close. That is a speed tie against Eradicate, I believe. Just uh, simply win the speed tie. Oh, never mind. It's faster at 47 speed. Uh, just outspeeds. All right, so 46 Let's... speed. All right, totally fine. No worries for Amber going into this next fighting section. And Headstrong getting her Kadabra as well. Nice couple of bonus, ca bonus catches here for these racers. Yeah, everyone uh, on a fairly good uh, catch route right now. Uh, Headstrong notably has 58 planned. Headstrong is a very huge proponent of marking every viable catch. Uh, <laughs> we'll probably end up seeing that dwindled down a little bit as we get through Pokemon yeah. Road and Mansion. Uh, but it is probably after pretty. Rock, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. It's always. Yeah, I, do, I do that too, though. I, I get it. Like, you just keep them in your back pocket and then eventually you get rid of coughing or get rid of tentacle or whatever mm -hmm. um, yeah i start making like the real cuts like once i'm in like once i'm done with uh hideout kind of planning like the catch rat out during that section of the game it's that wiggly tough that you had mentioned earlier earlier yuzarian uh, getting that evolved without a move teach and dumping that right away. Eevee doing this menu to lure right before this trainer here. And then Peach will opt to do it a little bit afterward, after both trainer battles are done. All right, so this Eevee here is the reason why we buy a guard spec in Eevee version. Uh, this Eevee knows, like... Growl and Sand Attack and a bunch of other dumb moves that we don't really want to deal with, so uh, we just use the guard spec, set up on it. Uh, that is a very awkward placement of that Pidgeotto. Yeah. On Amber's side.
The whole reason why Evie does that menu before the trainers is because of this one controller fight, fight, right? You want Evie to be at a decent enough HP to tank a couple of hits from the Evie. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be too low because it does know. Um, I don't think it knows double kick off the top of my head, uh, but it can just do a bunch of damage to you, and uh, you're sitting there so wasting two turns to set up on it. So you are going to take a couple hits, and you can be outsped by that Evie as well. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, more often than not, I find myself not needing to heal there. But then also you get to dump the Pokemon before getting the fight experience. And then also, if you actually wait before the trainer T-Pat's fighting and do your lure there, you can actually get unlured Pokemon on Route 10 if they were wandering off to the left side. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another benefit of the lure early on. Yeah, it's very rare, but it can definitely happen. It feels a little bit bad when you see a Nidoran male that's level like 20 and you're like, oh my gosh, it doesn't have poison jab. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, I see um, chat mentioning this also. With an incredible fight here. Oh, now nah, I missed the, the headbutt hit, so. Eh, now it's just an there. okay fight. <laughs> Yeah, now now it's just a fine fight. Yeah, the the Buzzy Buzz did like over over half, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, that that's uh <laughs> that's the consequence of having four special attack AVs within the cycle. Yeah. Uh, so T Pat's gonna go ahead and wait on this spinner, uh, camper. Uh, uh, Could uh, couldn't Alex tell yet. Alexis, I think is her name. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know her name because we. If we she catches me, I just reset before she yeah. even gets to me. Like, <laughs> I don't even load up the water. battle screen. It's just a just rage like, I can, I concede. Yeah. You have won this like, game. I don't think I've ever actually fought her. I think Greta's uh, right though. I think it's Alicia. Yeah. Ali no, uh, I think Alicia's the first one we fight on the route. Mm. Oh, J.K. Then. Yeah. I it might be Alexa. I, I don't know. I know there's an Alexa and an Alexis in the game. I don't know where the Alexis is. Yeah. All right. Get in the comments, chat. Find it. Find <laughs> get, Load up your backup files and let's go. Find, <laughs> find that out trainer. What, yeah, find out what that trainer is. Team out waiting on some Pokemon here. Uh, not getting good spawns here. Raticate. Oh, like Raticate. Right. Glowing Rat is very good. Uh, did end up getting a Nidoran female, I believe, while we were looking at other screens. Yep. Um, and chatting about Alexis, Alexa, that sort of deal. Uh, Kabra does outspeed the Raticate here, so this should be a no harm, no foul fight against the Raticate. Zip is at priority, so don't even have to worry too much about quick attack. That can be a very scary route for Pikachu if you don't have Growlithe or Abra, just to the fact that Pikachu has no good way of dealing with that sand shrew. Uh, her name is Picnicker Caitlin. Mm. She has a Goldeen and a Pidgeotto, both level 21. They both probably died a Zippy Zap. <laughs> I would assume, yeah. <laughs> Zippy Zap or Buzzy Buzz. I would assume uh, I just won't take take them out with, but I am waiting on Picnicker Caitlin now. Uh, now that we know her name. And Amber starting off very strong with a glowing Nidoran male. Pikachu absolutely needs one of the Nidoran line in order to make it through hideout. A headstrong, seeing one over on the dirt patch off to the left. See, there. and there you go. That's why you lure early. Mm -hmm. And this one is level 24, so that is good. Crisis averted. hold my breath for just a second here okay does get in the ball uh because we have bought multiple great balls in vermilion city uh the second controller will spawn with a premier ball at least one if you bought like 10 or 20 or two if you bought 20 or more uh a great premier ball uh, great throw is not actually guaranteed on any of these pokemon uh i think it's like a six percent ish chance to break out um Thankfully, not too punished there. You typically want to be going for these quick catches on Route 10 anyway to just kind of get through this catching section very quickly. You have a lot of things that evolve in one level, and so just want to party match them out and get your next set in as soon as you possibly can.
Headstrong, uh, nice. the only one not getting trolled on this route, uh, gets the near and male, and then Spiro and Krabby. Um, our other runners kind of having to wait for things to spawn. Amber not going for the f the backup potion that's uh, right there. Uh, no, it's super just a, it's just super potion. Generally, you're pretty good on supers unless like something really bad happens on J and J. I always grab that if I end up having to go to that side of the fence, just because it's nice to have one extra super potion, because uh, later in the run we're going to talk about a really awful fight that having an extra super potion is not the worst thing in the world for. Yeah. Definitely definitely want to be stocked up on supers for that fight, but it's probably on a on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll yeah, we'll if you're, if you're over judge. on that side of the route, it's not a terrible thing to, to pick up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Headstrong looking around for just one more thing. She must oh, have heard oh, it. Yeah. I couldn't I see it. She must have heard that. it. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this little neater hand female just hanging out by where Dratini spawns uh, in AOP. Does get that Nidoran male leveled up. I am looking on Headstrong's catch tracker. Uh, did end up evolving the Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, so not going to evolve this into No King. Uh, probably just going to deposit it on her next box menu. And not only do we have synced Spiro catches, but we also have synced Nidorino evolutions from both Amber and Headstrong. Love to see it. Uh, Headstrong with 60 Pokemon plans, so has a very fantastic catch route, can make uh, some very easy cuts depending on how well um, Rock Tunnel goes. Mm -hmm. T-Bat is level 24 on Eevee going to the Raticate fight, took minimal damage from the crunch from that, so I feel like he's in a pretty solid spot to be cruising through Rock Tunnel considering that he's still got a ton of catches to go, a ton of XP to lop onto that Eevee. Eevee probably gets double edge um, for T-Pat pretty easily before Hideout, assuming yeah, catches absolutely. go well for this next section. And double edge being that really, really strong move that makes Eevee a strong, independent Pokemon who don't need no partner. <laughs> Uh, t pat getting an immediate Cubone. Uh, this is uh, this is an okay catch here. Um, it evolves in like four levels, uh, so it'll be sticking with us for a while. But uh, you can get Cubone later, but Cubone in Tower is a myth. Oh, it's strong. Unlucky getting beat up pretty hard there. Oh my gosh, Super Fang. So she's gonna definitely need to heal before the Kangaskhan fight, unfortunately. Maybe depends on how tunnel the opening of tunnel goes. Uh, for yeah, some reason, when you one. catch Pokemon in this game, not in fights, uh, sometimes the game just like kind of heals you. It's really weird. Yeah, you That's essentially funny. gain the HP difference that you get from the level up, and I believe and then some in certain regards. I forget how the the actual like uh, deal goes. Yeah, like I never noticed it till someone actually like pointed it out to me, and I was like, "Wait, you just gain HP sometimes? Like, it's really strange." A uh, T-Pat with a Zubat. Why can't my Zubats do that? Yeah, just stay still. <laughs> just sit there. <laughs> yeah, Zubat is either like instant attack or instant swing left to right most of the time. So being able to wait a beat and then throw immediately is generally the the way to go if you don't recognize that Zubat's Zubat's going left to right. Right, headstrong entering rock tunnel. Did something uh, else? There is spawn? a Rhyhorn on uh, on Headstrong screen directly after this trainer. A T Pat. Um, there was a Onyx kind of just in the way for T Pat. Yeah. I could have sworn I saw something else spawn on top of the Onyx when when he encountered it. That that could have been me. Yeah, Headstrong will be uh, beating up this Slowpoke here. Uh, there is a Rhyhorn directly south of the sky, so uh, Headstrong getting the first ride Pokemon of the run. 
Uh, it's also very notable that Amber is now in the exact same situation as EV runners are. Due to not having that Growlithe, uh, they will need a Rhyhorn coming out of Rock Tunnel. Otherwise, they're going to have to hope for a Growlithe on either Route 7 or Route 8 to use as that ride. Due to not seeing a Growlithe on 6 and instead catching a Kadabra to move through that section. Yeah, Teapot with no Rhyhorn yet. Uh... See a Machop. And grab one in the lower left-hand corner, it looks like. Yep. So good on was, experience. I think that was a Graveler. Uh, it was a Glowing Graveler as well. Yeah, so Big it should be in... experience. Yeah, should be in prime position to get Double Edge, maybe even off the rival fight. Glowing Graveler, I think you do deposits, otherwise you might gain way too many levels on Pokemon that don't want it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah Graveler is a big experience. Uh, just going for it. Hopefully I'm wrong and we just see 9.8. Or you can intentionally throw a grate or something. I'm trying to peer at... We can get T-Pats double right now. He has Firo for sure, and uh, Nidorino. Mm -hmm. get I'm chop and All right, let's see. Oh my god! Oh, no. Okay, oh, honestly, no. it's oh, I'm dying one. inside. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be better, it could be worse. Uh, that Graveler experience does get Cubone and Machop up to a very substantial level. Uh, the issue, obviously, is Zubat, Fira, and Nidorino getting a couple extra levels each. Uh, yeah. But, uh, like I said, Eevee most assuredly gets double edged before okay. Rival now. That yep. is, are there... So I'm, I'm curious, for, for both of you that run Eevee way more than I have, uh, Amber getting their Rhyhorn here, really, really good. Uh, what benefits does Double Edge have in Rock Tunnel, if possible? You can uh, kill this Kangaskhan much quicker. The like, Kangaskhan and um, Sophie. The Vulpix and um, yeah. is it a Kadabra? Then you yeah, don't have that, to X uh, attack her. Trainer Sophie. She, uh, she becomes a two-turn fight. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, usually, like if you consider thinking about like Pikachu, Pikachu will need to two controller the hyper klaus fight due to the rhyhorn as well as uh sophia usually um if you want to play it a little bit safer uh oh uh th thank you albie i forgot about that fight uh as well you don't actually have to set up on the hiker either uh you one shot the machop and but uh, bu uh bouncy bubble one shots the rhyhorn so you don't have to set up on that fight either yeah that's wild because you can just double edge the machop and then heal right back up to essentially full Yep. off the right horn so you don't even yeah have having double edge this early is actually crazy for t pat yeah that is wild but i think this fight specifically the kangaskhan i think this is a two-turn fight i think you just set up x attack and double edge i don't think you have yep. to wait another turn yep otherwise you would uh sizzly slide twice but much better to just yeah, I'll, every fight in this uh, section is now like a one to two turns faster. Jeez, what I would give for a guaranteed one shot on that Kangaskhan. Yeah, so uh, Double Edge is kind of an interesting move. Uh, it deals quite a lot of damage in recoil, but we do have Bouncy Bubble to kind of heal ourselves uh, back up. Oh, oh, crazy spinner pass there by T Pat. <laughs> a little, little too close there. Too, totally fine. Oh, also totally fine. <laughs> yeah. What is there to worry about? Absolutely calculated. We need that right one. Uh, spinners in this game will not see you uh, unless you are on like the exact same tile as they are when they fully spin. Yeah, he actually and... enacting my recent runs. <laughs> <laughs> no right ones. <laughs> uh, T-Pat has been in this scenario before and... Oh boy. My, I think my the estimates not get are like... Rhyhorn, so you can. I don't remember exactly how much time you lose not having Rhyhorn. Oh my god, this double edge this early is actually just crazy. I'm sorry, it's so oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I think the I estimates say... are like 45 seconds to a minute. Yeah, yeah that's what I've heard. Upwards past 45 seconds. It's not too bad till you get to Route 17. And then um, 
I guess some fights you have to party manage a little more too, which is frustrating, but yeah, hopefully he sees one soon. Well, he's got two rooms left to go through, so. Um, Ooh, he's uh, actually going to reset this room. I respect it. Uh, knowing that t has got double edge now, he knows that he has like some time saved over the other two racers. Uh, still not getting right horn, however, so we're just holding out hope that it shows up. Yeah, this fight as well is uh, amazing with double edge. You just double edge both Mon. It's so good. You do have to heal before this fight, though. Um, you do want to be at full health for this one because the Kadabra uh, does do a lot of damage. Amber uh, getting around all these spinners here. I'm just noticing T Pat's pace right now. It is like if we get Rhyhorn, he's on exceptional pace. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say things too early, but uh, we are looking at a very good run coming from T Pat if we get that Rhyhorn. Uh, as uh, two show up well, in tandem on Headstrong. <laughs> Uh, we could just uh, give those over to uh, T-Pat. Uh, unfortunately, that's a Graveler down there, unfortunately. All right, we got one more room. And all of... Nothingness so far. Oh, even the lure up. Uh, he, he, uh, he hears something. Here's the Q-Bone in the corner. Uh, it's going to heal up that... Hey, you, you do you have well. to heal this up just a little bit, um, but for this fight, you're, you're going to set up uh, an X special and just double bounce. Uh, uh, you might be able to double edge your way through this fight, but um, I still think healing with uh, bouncy bubbles is just better, even if you could double edge your way through this fight. Yeah, this math has both fake out and faints. Both are priority moves. Eevee has none as opposed to Pikachu, which has Zippy Zap. So no matter what you do here, you are taking damage from Meowth. And without yep. uh, Bouncy Bubble, you would need to heal for the rival fight, I imagine, because then you'd probably get quick attacked. I haven't actually yeah. done that, but I assume that's what would happen. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, Eevee will hit 29 here, and I believe reaches either 64 or 63 speed here. Uh, 64 speed. Uh, is this 1C Rival 4 territory? Like, what are the conditions for that to happen? Another Rhyhorn on the Headstrong screen. <laughs> oh no. t I'm not seeing a Rhyhorn. All right, t -Pat, t -Pat's no. walking out of here Rhyhornless. Let's go, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so all of, yeah. all of the time save that t -Pat has gotten with an exceptional Eevee is essentially now negated by the fact that he does not have a ride here. is exceptionally unfortunate. Uh, looks like Amber is going to get through Rock Tunnel without issue. Um, I'm, so it looks like T-Pat only missed out on the Rhyhorn there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of our runners got everything else they wanted to see in Tunnel. I believe that's the case. Yeah, I'm not and anything that dodged. Everyone got Zubat, everyone got Machop, everyone yeah. got Cubone. 33 is a very healthy count coming out of Rock Tunnel. Um, so this this fight specifically, you could do like one controller, but this Pidgeotto still has um, a Sand Attack. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you would have to set up both an X Attack and an X Special. Uh, I don't know if you have to set up an X Attack, but... Uh, you'd still have to set up an X-Special to get this with Pidgeotto, so it's the one turn where you can get Sand Attacked. So I see. Uh, always two controller this fight. Although I don't know if you have to set up for Double Edge. I think you could just go with Double Edge. But I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I don't think I've ever done a one controller version of this fight without guard spec. Uh, very, very long time ago, back in the day, this was a one controller fight. We would buy two guard specs, um, specifically. One would be used on Alicia, the other one would be used on this fight. Yeah, and like, there's no way that you could possibly think that, like, oh, I'm going to be level 29 for this fight and have double edge, like, way back in Vermilion. Yeah. It's like, 
you'd rather just have the shop just go to the standard shop and expect standard outcomes. So is there a level that you aim for with Pika for moves or anything, or is it just higher is better? Uh, higher is generally better. Um, ideally, you use partner Pokemon a lot. Just right. So, so. Like the, the idea is that you want to hit, generally want to hit 28 at least by the time you hit uh, Giovanni in Hideout. That way you can essentially guarantee the plus six helping hand double mm. kick onto the Rhyhorn. Uh, thankfully, the partner Pokemon in Nidoking here, Nidoking being level 28 is pretty solid. I haven't got a grasp on what this Nidoking's attack is, uh, but as long as it's 62 or higher, you can pretty much just breeze straight through Hideout. Um, at least like the, the Raticade Vulture fights, and then along with Rhyhorn, you can do a little party management and uh, swap it out for like the Grimer fight, things like that. It's very like... Hideout is very modular for Pikachu in that sense, that depending on your Pika stats, your Nitto stats, whether you have Rhyhorn or not, and if you've seen those stats and are able to recognize what you can capitalize on, uh, you can kind of set up the best possible outcome here. 28 for Pika is very good already. 62 in both stats, it looks like. Uh, so isn't going to be, like, not going to do anything, like, fantastic, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it'll yeah. be very solid getting through. Uh, one thing that I will think Amber could do here is, on the Hypno fight specifically, you have the option to either X-Attack Nidda or Pika and try to go for a one-shot. I think if you're level 28 here, it might actually be better to hit with just Poison Jab Sippy Sap and hope that the 28 damage boost carries you through the one turn. That could also be an option, depending on Nidoking's King's attack. Meanwhile, Eevee with Double Edge just... Double Edge. Heal. Double Edge. Bouncy Bubble. Double Edge. Yeah, we don't get to see a metronome yet, at least, unfortunately. It does look like Headstrong's Eevee is 26, so that will probably be the only instance of a possible metronome from from mm -hmm. there. T-Pat is making his way through this route here. Uh, not much to talk about on this route on Eevee version. Trying to think in my head, I think Amber 100% cuts the bush on 7. Uh, this is to... If Amber did not have anything other than Growlithe to catch, I think uh, they might opt to skip it. But because they still do not have Jigglypuff, I think the benefits of you cutting the bush and going for the Firestone uh, are pretty good, assuming that you get one or both of the catches that you'd like. Three Pidgeotos, the three, dream. Three, you know, all facing the same direction. <laughs> yeah, don't mind us here, just having a little... Uh, yeah, just just little hanging out. together. You can see an Abra there, which is pretty nice, uh, if you don't have one already. But that's, yeah, It'd be interesting uh, to see if Amber cuts this, uh, goes for the bush. I, th I think they do cut the bush, um, yeah. ju just to see if maybe he sees a spawn for, like, uh, Growlithe or Jigglypuff. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is the correct play. If Amber had caught Jiggly, I think you possibly get cutting the first push, but then like walk around, wait for some Pokemon to pop up, and then if you see a Growlithe, you cut the left side bush and you enter in and, and grab it. Yeah. Epat setting up the nature. Um, so now every Pokemon for the rest of the run that we catch will be a modest nature. And and a uh, whole lot of nothing in this grass. Yeah, just a little little rat in the upper upper side. All uh, right, so. well, and away we go. So uh, one more chance uh, for Growlithe uh, in the next grass, I believe, is the only other route it could spawn on. Correct. It'll come in at around like level 24 to 27, I believe, on that route. Yeah, it's the only thing cool to talk about on this route, at least for Eevee version. Um, it's really not a lot going on, uh, on Pika, you know, there's the, the Firestone and if you have Growlithe, you immediately, you know, you can, for Arcanine, if you don't have a ride Pokemon, but 
Uh, the only other cool thing about that route is those uh, spinners on the route, the gamblers, um, all of their Pokemon uh, only have Oko moves. So they only know like Guillotine and Fissure. And, and that is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to hit either of those spinners. Uh, Amber actually Amber is really wanting that Growlithe. Uh, yeah. Not too much time lost here by resetting the route, um, but really hoping for that Growlithe spawn. All right, it's just going to go. Uh, right. So that is actually really unfortunate for Amber because the the speed that they would have gained going from Lavender Tower down Pokemon Road, it, basically Amber is effectively an EV player in terms of movement speed yeah. now. And good news for Headstrong, maybe not for us, is that uh, there was a flinch, so we didn't see Metronome. Uh, yeah, oh, so... Uh, good, good news for Headstrong. No, for yeah, sure. no height no moves today. No metronomes in the final race of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee 2024 tournament. Oh, sorry, sorry y'all. Yeah, you're going to have to use the, the command for metronome if you want to see metronomes. <laughs> so Amber is in an interesting position now in terms of candy usage uh, because Amber is now forced to do the same menu that... Uh, that Eevee does on Pokemon Road. As soon as you catch that Ponyta, Amber is gonna put it in their party and candy it immediately, which means that uh, Amber is now essentially forced into two plus two, I think, in terms of rare candying. Whereas uh, normally, uh, I'm trying to remember. No, you I do get four candies before this. Yes, the, okay. there there is an extra candy in Mansion. There's actually two extra candies in Mansion. One is a little out of the way. The other one's kind of on the path anyway. Yeah, either way, it'll be it'll be a little bit of a change. Amber does run both Pikachu and Eevee. Is actually sub uh, three hours in Eevee, so is very familiar with with both sides of the menu. Just gonna have to. Just gonna have to pull that over from the EV side for for this particular run. Yeah, yeah. This is also another uh, section for uh, T Pat where having double edge is incredible. Almost every one of these fights is like one or two turns, um, may maybe three if you have to like set up one extra item or something. But uh, every single fight in this in this section is uh, so much better with double edge. The the hypno is one turn. Uh, the oh, that was a really good yeah. uh, poison on Amber's side. Yeah, absolutely. Does go for that poison jab, zippy zap. Uh, interesting to see what the attack stat is here. Uh, 24 at 29 is fine. Should be able to get through Retire Voltorb without having to set up. Um, so no need to party manage. Just doing that uh, one wow, control right one there. One shots the Grimer with Glitzy Glow. <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. Also, the fact that Eevee is level 30 and gets an additional damage boost on top of the crack special attack that T-Pat has. It's nuts. Yeah, I think at least uh, 66 special attack at minimum right now. Possibly more depending on uh, level specific AVs. It's strong going for 1C Hypno here. Which, if you have good attack, you can just headbutt it a few times, and there you can see the flinch, which is really good. And then you just kind of hope you don't get put to sleep, which looking pretty good there. Yeah, yeah. If you have great attack, you can just go for three headbutts. It's yeah. a little slow, but um, it's very, very good. Uh, it's just a nice way to get through that fight without having to use up any X items or two controller. Yeah, I would even say that's like slightly faster than a two turn two controller fight, just due to the the lower amount of inputs. It's pretty comparable, but... Yeah, and not having to summon the, the player and uh, de-summon them. Exactly. So with that, all, all things considered, probably a, a little bit on the faster side, so just return it on one controller. T-Pat is violating OSHA rules here by standing on a rolly chair. And that's the last time that you'll hear that reference this year. Yep. Cross that off your final bingo card. That's not true. There might there we might see it in a few weeks. Oh, uh, at least in, in tournament regards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All 
All right, so this this is actually a pretty good section for our runners to kind of get an idea of like where their catch route is, because um, all these fights are you know pretty pretty standards, you know one or two turns, uh, especially for someone like T Pad who's very over leveled. Um, just realize they have Marowak at this point too. Um, <laughs> so early. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, that probably serves the same purpose as Rhyhorn if you're looking to go into the J and J fight for T Pad. Uh, Rhyhorn's usually used as kind of like the the beefy off tank while EV spams Glitzy Glow, I believe. Um, yeah. So, hope probably hoping to use that uh, Marowax increase like base stat total from evolving from Keybone to play the same role essentially. Yeah. So our runners kind of probably taking a look at their catch route, just kind of thinking like where they can make up a catch at. Uh, Amber actually currently has forty nine planned. Uh, that is if everything spawns. So Amber will need one more Pokemon. Um, yeah. Does not have Tentacool marked, so will likely just be the Tentacool. Um, yeah. I think that's the only one that I'm seeing that's not on there. It's Tentacool. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just a consequence of not seeing anything on Route 7 or 8 show up for them. Uh, no Puppy, no Jiggly means minus 3 to the catch count from their initial 52 planned. Yeah, Teapot also having 49 uh, planned as well. Again, another ride down and the drain the, in the form of Rhyhorn. So, yep. So, uh, likely both uh, Amber and T-Pat are going to have to find one extra Pokemon. Likely will be either Tentacool or Magmar. I mean, I saw that chat mention that this is a range on the Arbok and is a favorite Ooh, range. It gets it. the range. Very, Ooh. very solid. Putting that crack special attack to good use here. That's huge. You don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. Chat saying is another in... another good reason why you want to be very over leveled with uh, EV uh, coming into this section. Uh, just makes all these fights so much easier. The dream two turn fight, eleven sixteen, from what chat is mentioning right now. Amber's going to take this fight a little bit differently. Uh, they do have Rhyhorn as well as Nidoking, so it's going to opt to use Rhyhorn as the primary attacker. Hoping to see the exact same two turn, except that instead of Blitzy glowing into the Arbok, uh, Amber's going to drill run into it and hopefully either get the range, get a crit, take it out as soon as possible, and then the reason should fall shortly after that. I was surprised T Pat using uh, Marowak for this section, um, but I guess when when T Pat caught oh, Rattler, gets the one shot on the wheezing. So unbelievably good. This Eevee is so cracked. Gets the Machoke evolution. Gosh. Just think what this, what this run could have been with Rhyhorn. Yeah, exactly. But like I said from the very beginning, I think uh, Amber did end up Okoing the Arbok as well. It's gonna pump another X attack <laughs> into the wheezing here. Hopefully get that plus four. Uh, does unfortunately misses. Jorun does have a chance to miss, uh, but it's just going to helping hand to guarantee Jorun when it does hit here on this turn. When T Pack caught Graveler, did it go directly to his box? I do not. Yeah, he had a full party. Uh, okay, so that's why we're using Marowak and not Graveler. Graveler uh, can be used as a substitute for mm -hmm. um, this section here if you don't have Rhyhorn, but. Uh, if it just goes directly to your box, it's not worth pulling out um, as another Pokemon. Ooh, Headstrong going for the the one-hit KO with the Rhyhorn as well. Fingers crossed. I like it. Rhyhorn is level 26 here. Uh, nice. Thankfully, Ooh, Weezing goes for Toxic. Yeah, thankfully, Weezing goes for Toxic. Uh, and doesn't. Oh, and the poison expel due to power of love, too. So, not double targeted down, not unlucky. Still will need a heal menu, though, I think. Gotcha. Because you need, well, according to the notes, both Pokemon above 60. Um, basically, you get one turn to either get both of them above 60 or remove poison or whatever. So, because Eevee's low health and then Rhyhorn's poisoned. 
Oh, I guess Eevee's poison too. Definitely a menu then. Which is unfortunate. Uh, crit on the fake out uh, is going to force T Pat to sizzly slide here instead of double edge. Um, probably could have possibly gone for double edge on the version here, but uh, Recoil would have unfortunately knocked out the Eevee due to that fake out crit. Yeah, but you you get the free heal here off the uh, bouncy bubble, so T-Pat doesn't even need to heal after this fight, so... Um, not a big time loss, but you do lose out on that extra turn that you could have saved because you have double edge. All right, Amber starting the Giovanni 1 fight. I will say this right now. A 132, like, XX Giovanni 1 at 32 caught is phenomenal for mm -hmm. T-Pat. I am staring at my splits right now. Uh, I have uh, 31 caught at Geo 1 with 13330. Uh, so... <laughs> Aside from Rhyhorn, T-Pad is having a fantastic run right now. Yeah, this, this is insane. Yeah, my, my PB is 34 catches and then 1 hour 35 minutes, so... Ooh, this is pretty good run. That's why they're here, and I'm commentating. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't think I actually updated my catch count, so uh, forget what I just said. But either way, T-Bat's still in a great run. <laughs> yeah, T-Bat's pace is actually incredible here. Uh, uh, T-Bat going to fly to Lavender. Did lure uh, beforehand as well. I almost wonder. So Amber is one catch ahead of T-Pat, uh, but is a Rhyhorn up? So I wonder if we get to see synced feeds coming into the Pokemon Road section. And Headstrong is not too far behind either. Nope. Headstrong also one catch ahead of uh, Amber as well. Uh, Amber going to pick up the backup Ultras. Uh, respect it, knowing that they have to basically catch a one-off. Uh, probably going to use that as a little bit of a safety net in case of Magmar, Tangela, and the like. Headstrong should heal here, yeah, because the the lonely nature coming back to bite. Yep. The minus defense got to heal up here. T-Pack going for the skip. Easy peasy. When she turns the other way. <laughs> yeah, that skip looks uh, scary, but um, as long as you kind of hug the wall there, she can't see you. So yeah. uh, a lot of the trainers in this game are kind of blind. Uh, they either have like no vision or they have like eagle eye. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see a really good example of uh, completely blind trainers uh, in, in about a uh, in a, in a little over a half hour. Are you talking Route 17? Uh, no, I'm talking about Erica's gym. Oh, yeah, those are pretty bad, too. They need <laughs> those, glasses. They, they, uh, they can't see you at all. <laughs> all right, T-Pack going to wait on this spinner here. Uh, gets the really bad cycle, unfortunately. Uh, but is through. Um, still looking for a ghastly. T-Pat... Uh, definitely yeah. wants to see Ghastly. Uh, no one wants to catch Tentacool. Yeah. Tentacool is uh, kind of a uh, a last resort catch. It will. It you most of the time it will always spawn. Uh, I, again, you looks Amber scary, doing the really safe. Yeah. When they turn left, you gotta hug the wall there to make sure they don't see you. This first trainer, sometimes you get sucker punched. 
the second one always sucker punches, as far as I'm aware. Yes. Otherwise, I'm just incredibly unlucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been running this game for uh, almost four years now, and I don't think I've never uh, not been sucker punched by the second trainer. Uh, Pikachu is not going to learn Thunder. Has a pretty decent range on the the upcoming Justin James fight. I think I saw 67 special attack at level 30, and I want to say that is roughly an 11 and 16 on the Weezing uh, for plus four Thunderbolt or Helping Hand plus two. Amber getting the non cringe cycle on those spinners. Uh, Teapot, oh, and patience paid Ooh. off. Ooh. At least one thing showed up for Teapot on this run when <laughs> when he needed yeah. it. T uh, patience paid off there uh, for T-Pat. Um, just waiting around for the uh, Ghastly. Just just a few extra seconds just to get, let Ghastly spawn. Um, T-Pat going to switch to Ultras here. T-Pat practice throw and then, uh, then the real throw. Yeah, the motion controls are, are a great oh, thing. They're awful. When Ghastly is up and right but not all the way right. Tough. Uh, Good they're, catch, they're, they are uh, hilarious if you ever play this game in handheld mode, though. <laughs> I have uh, never. Is that you just flinging your switch around? Like no, uh... <laughs> it's actually like aim and shoot for yeah. handheld mode. Yeah, you just, uh, use you just the... kind of aim with the the switch and then just press A. <laughs> Wait, is that easier or harder? It sounds easier. Uh, like it depends depending on the Pokemon. Definitely easier for things that move around or like weird things like Onyx. Uh, but much would rather have the the experience gain from having the second controller out by oh, all yeah, yeah, by yeah. all means. Yeah, sure. you uh, you don't gain the extra experience if you do it that way. So it's uh, it's not worth it. Uh, the game Amber. does run better in uh, undocked mode though. It does run a little faster. Uh, like held race switch, win. Like, like most Switch games do. Listen, I was speedrunning on handheld in the practice room yes, at GDQ you one day. Yes, you were. Uh, it was awful. Do not try that at home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, glare and then Dark Pulse into the Marowak. So Eevee doesn't have damage on it, thankfully. Uh, yeah, so this this is actually a great fight for T-Pat. T-Pat's now through. Um, as long as we don't get some like weird like Marowak is like taking that. everything. This is right, such well, a great call from T Pat as a substitution for Rhyhorn. Well, Amber actually switching to Clefairy here for uh, this next fight. So gonna go uh, older strats here, uh, where you kind of use a fairy type to bait them into just one shotting this uh, Clefairy. Yeah, another consequence um, of not having Growlithe here means that you cannot sacrifice the Growlithe and then ride the Fainted Arcanine later. Yep. Uh, is going to have to plot that Clefairy for... However, there the is one tracks. advantage. Uh, so we, we used uh, Jigglypuff uh, way, way back in the day for this because it is a fairy type and oh, you know, right. we'll drop the poison types. There is one advantage to using Clefairy, though, is that Clefairy actually comes uh, with increased happiness. Um, when you catch it, um, so it's already in range to possibly get Power of Love. Um, so it can live uh, the Poison Jab from the Arbok and uh, be able to tank the second hit from the... Uh, uh, the issue comes either. right now, however, yes. is that due to uh, due to Pikachu one shotting the Arbok, basically, uh, it does gain experience and levels up. So not yep. only did Amber lose out on the uh, time it took to withdraw the Clefairy, um, but uh, the level up in battle also hurts a little bit. Thankfully, it was only just one level and not two, uh, so not too much of a damper on their time there. Yeah, the, the, the downside, of course, being that Clefairy is very low level and uh, Team Rocket's Pokemon are very high level, about 20 levels higher. So uh, if you do take something out while the Clefairy's there, it will level up, so. Mm -hmm. I just registered that Amber must... Did Amber one-shot the Arbok with plus two people? Was that a crit? Uh, I don't think it was a crit. Because that seems... That is wild if it if it wasn't. Yeah, all, all three of our runners have uh, crazy starters. Like, they're all good. Like, no one has a bad starter. <laughs> T 
T-Pat about to start the Snorlax fight. Um, so uh, this fight here. Uh, so catching Snorlax would be kind of cool because it gives a ton of experience. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, Snorlax gains like an attack boost. Uh, so we just run away from it. We don't really need experience at this point. No. <laughs> it, it, yeah, this, like, this is a very weird section of the speedrun where we don't actually have a main Pokemon uh, right now. Um, we're about to go to Route 17 where there are a ton of trainers. Uh, we're not going to fight any of them. Uh, they're all very blind. Um, and we don't actually need a main. It's kind of weird. Everything we catch here, all the experience just kind of goes to waste. Um, you know, it's good to evolve the things in our party, um, but otherwise it's it's really just like you know it'd be cool if we had like we get starmie early but um it just kind of sits there and doesn't do anything t-pat's getting terrible spawns here too yeah speaking of getting things early t-pat absolutely needs to find a ponytail in this patch of grass otherwise it's going to be a long walk down to the second half of this route uh amber having that right horn and headstrong having that right horn as well are right on t-pat's tail uh, yeah, so there was a Rapidash that T Pat could go up and grab. Uh, uh, not great without Silver Razzes, unfortunately, and those don't yeah. get picked up until the very bottom of the route. Yeah, and you lose out on the Ponyta catch, so you're kind of back to needing one more Pokemon. Uh, right now, T Pat's at exactly 50 catches. Uh, there is a Doduo, though, which is good. Uh, Doduo is a great find. Uh, another Rapidash. A second Rapidash has hit the route. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, if you're Teep at this point, how... Like, how tempted are you to grab this Rapidash and catch another one off? Like, I, think I it almost... depends on, like, what... I don't think Teep Hat grabbed the backup Ultras. So we we probably have to double grate a Magmar. Amber also needing one extra catch here. Uh, catching the early Pidgey, kind of biting them. Oh, but does get Ponyta. Yes. Okay, so good good Ponyta for Amber. Uh, likely going to see the, the instant candy to Ponyta menu uh, from Amber as well, considering that they do not have that fast Arcanine. Um, yeah, t has got that entire Haunter evolution to think about this Rapid Ash. Yeah. I think you wait till the last patch of grass. I don't know. But, no, uh, uh, oh, he's not thinking about it. He's waiting. What? He's, he's he... waiting. He's uh, waiting. He does for... need Pidgey, though. So that is a good spawn yeah, for them. So we're going to take the Pidgey encounter to think about it. Yeah, probably just hoping to clear up like in one extra spawn slot in hopes of getting that pony try to spawn. But those spawn slots are filling up real fast. Yeah. Little jumpy and do -do. actually have to menu their party now as well. So t -Pat's gonna have to uh, deposit some things here, and I, I don't know. I think maybe just going for the rapid ash is fine, and then just yeah, kind of you menu that's, that's yeah, cool. you, yeah, you absolutely menu here, bring in the Pidgey, and then you get the sweet rapid ash experience on the side of Doduo and Pidgey, grabbing all those evolutions at once. I think this this is not the optimal play, but this is the best play that t -Pat can come up with at this point in time. Not put uh, Pidgey in the party, so I'm assuming uh, they're hoping to see Pidgeotto as well. I'm uh, gonna go double Ultra here. Yeah, with Raz excellent, this is like basically eradicate if you didn't Raz it on Route 10. So exceptionally uh, favored. Chat thing, chat, they forgot to put the Pidgey in, in their party. And it's all good. Pidgey here will still like evolve in time yes and then uh, it'll be very close it'll likely evolve on the uh sabrina fight but oh gosh, um, amber's just got no uh, luck. what is amber waiting around amber's currently for? looking for both one of at least psyduck or oh. Dojo. cannot afford to leave with one without one oh, of them. and then out. both of them oh, show up okay. Okay. okay all right amber's amber's clear of this route and headstrong getting a pony on her screen and just say strong. kingler following you around is the funniest thing it's Pissed. so huge. Uh, and it just walks sideways, too. Traveler is one of my favorite ones that follows you. It just rolls behind you. 
<laughs> you know, fun fact, I'll give you a little bit of lore about Lapras straps real quick. Uh, Sandy and I were like in a VC one night, like late at night one night, and we were trying to figure out like good partner Pokemon for Pikachu to do safe to see endgame strats with. Uh, one of the very cursed things that we thought up with was catching a gravel and rock tunnel and then having it roll around and pick up like a hidden item, hoping for a water stone to evolve an Eevee with into Vaporeon so that you'd have a fish that's tanky enough <laughs> to tank Pidgeot Air Slash. <laughs> this is this is the this is the best version of like magical Christmas land I've ever heard of. <laughs> uh, but then Sandy How thought many things have gone right in this run. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, Sandy correcting me. It was just in a chat channel, but uh, okay, still very funny. stands. Yeah. All right, Amber going for this do duo here. Uh, if it would get off the trampoline. So I think based off of this catch and the next, uh, it's probably going to end up grabbing... Uh, might grab Tentacle, might grab Magmar or Tangela, one of the two. Uh, if Tentacle, then they definitely leave Grimer in the box on their next party management. Ooh, good Pidgey for Headstrong there. Mm-hmm. She did update her tracker to 50 planned. Crossing out Old Ghastly and then Pentacool. Yeah, looks like Psyduck is off the list now in lieu of coughing. Yeah. I like it. Good yeah. route. Yeah, we have a very solid road for to 50 for both Headstrong and T-Pat. Amber is... Uh, yet to be determined is going to depend on whether they do end up going for that tentacle or not. Yeah, if we just like catch a glimpse of positioning now as far as catch count and pacing goes of story progression t-pad is like very solidly ahead going into catching the star section uh amber a little bit behind that and headstrong one catch behind amber roughly at about the same plot progression Uh, T-Pat is going to bring in that Pidgey over Doe Duo. So this locks T-Pat into using Fire Blast on Blue for that Executor. Uh, Respectable is choosing to dump to, just so that Doe Duo doesn't gain those extra levels going into the endgame. Um, and dumping two Pokemon at once, too, is pretty high value in terms of time save. Each right, one of those levels costs you two seconds. Water and see what there is. Bunch of rats and a cool. Tangelina. Uh, T-Pat grabbing this tentacle. Yeah, had second thoughts about it first and then realized that if he sees the tentacle now, probably best to catch it and not worry too much about the spawn rate of Staryu later on. Once you do catch something, you are on a chain for that specific Pokemon, and it is 5% increased chance to show up later, so Staryu gets bumped a little bit lower on the encounter table, but hopefully still manages to show up in a timely manner for each of these racers. Yeah, Amber uh, still at 49 catches. We'll need to find one extra Pokemon here. There is a Tangela, opts to not go for it, but gets an instant Staryu. And we have six star you. you. And six like and 1034 for Amber. Oof. T Pat unfortunately getting a little yeah. motion control there. Yeah. But Headstrong mm -hmm. also running into her star with a 1096. Ooh, that's a star. Yeah, good old two to the power of 10. Though. Oh yeah. man, it's gonna have a really good attack and hit points, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> And good HP is fine. That means you can uh, you can take some hits. Uh, Amber also getting Tentacool, so that actually does get them to 50. Yeah, so this will be Tentacool into Tentacool, and then uh, it's probably going to opt to catch Grimer before doing the big mansion menu. 
Uh, unfortunately, Tetsu didn't stay too long in that one spot. Hopefully, still gets in with that Silver Raz. Yep. Is not punished. The rich get richer. So all three of our runners also getting Staryu. Um, that's very big. Um, sometimes you sit at the bottom of this route and wait, wait forever for Staryu. It's not fun. No. Happened to Headstrong last race for her. Headstrong going for the, the glowing coughing instead <laughs> go, gets the glowing coughing spawn on top of her. Works out. Yeah. All right, so T-Pat is... I believe that actually completes 50 for T-Pat. Yeah, along with that Lapras and Porygon as bonus gift Pokemon is uh, locked in on that. Pidgey will assuredly evolve into Pidgeotto and then Pidgeot by the time Sabrina is done and finished with. Uh, Star stats are looking, looking solid for T-Pat's side. Yep. It's very fast Star. Uh, special attack's pretty good. <laughs> a little scared for Amber there because those swimmers can see very far and Tentacruel likes to just home in on you. Yeah, uh, so the, uh, you do not want to fight one of those swimmers. <laughs> yeah, probably skirt a little bit close there. Uh, because Amber is opting to menu now, is going to instead leave the Tentacool in the box and then opt to catch the Grimer. 8187. Uh, special uh, attacks little bit a little... On... Yeah, special attacks like eh, and then speed. This probably does not outspeed Rapidash, but is safe enough to outspeed Ninetales and Pidgeot at the very least. Um, so bed heal is probably on the table for Amber, depending on what we see at, uh, at 46. Yeah, Headstrong has not done uh, her star you menu yet, so we don't know uh, her star stats, but it's looking like T-Pat star is uh, very fast and good special attack. Uh, remains to be seen if it can go for any cool ranges later. Um, Amber's is uh, middling speed will probably outspeed everything in the game except for like the Rapidash. Yeah, um, Headstrong still has the Repel, so probably opting to menu here to make full use of the, the repel steps so that she won't encounter any weird like small rats or or ditto that are kind of trolly and it looks like 84 was it 84 80 84 90 oh, oh if we saw it's not 80 big. speed we would have it we would have a problem i think <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 8692 uh, for the speed. So uh, again, a, a pretty pretty average stars for everybody. Um, T Pat's slightly better than uh, the other two, but yeah. uh, pretty average across the board. Yeah, I'd say Headstrong special attack is pretty solid as well. This probably allows her to go for a couple of ranges in the end game, uh, as far as things like Koga, like using Scalds instead of Psychics, things like that. Um, Amber at 45 just needs to evolve uh, Duck, Bird, and uh, Slime. Uh, Headstrong just needs to double evolve uh, the Bird and evolve the other Bird and the Weezing. I did think I t, t bats the same. Did anyone else catch Headstrong star speed? I think it was 114, which is not great. But maybe I missed saw uh, it. Oh, uh, that speed looked pretty healthy. Um, maybe I saw it wrong. Yeah, um, we'll we'll be able to infer what the speed is if the Starmie gets thunderbolted and what Headstrong ends up doing to to mitigate it. Uh, but T Bone, yeah, I was also looking at the special attack and I was trying to look at the two numbers super fast. Yeah, yeah it looks okay, like so one twenty two speed is more than good enough to yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. get past Boing. Thank you, chat. And Cheap Hat picking up the Max Elixir um, and the Secret Key. Uh, so that will be the RPP restoring item uh, for later in the game. 
Reaction also another there. instance of uh, <laughs> synced feeds, both Amber and Headstrong exiting Ted at the same time. Ted being doubly angry that he's been bested. Alright, T-Pat starting the edit quiz portion, so uh, get your edit quizzes in chat. Amber not having the repel here and instead opting to use that on an earlier route means that they have to do a little bit more dodging than headstrong in this basement room, uh, but it hasn't gotten trolled, thankfully. Uh, is going to need to pick up Lapras candy due to uh, candying that Ponyta early, um, so that's another consideration for, for later. That's strong going uh, around that spinner above, uh, unfortunately getting a uh, coughing spawn. Yeah, the spinner is spins on a pretty quick cycle. Uh, Headstrong actually could have taken advantage of running into the coughing there to pass the scientist. Uh, whenever you get into encounter or uh, loading zone change, spinners uh, reset their timer on when they can turn. Uh, but just playing a little bit safe there, especially on a high stakes race such as this, you definitely do not want to be making any unnecessary mistakes for sure. That spinner is especially annoying because you just gotta wait twice, three times sometimes. Yeah, and also that if you're going to not hit any spinner in this game, that is the spinner to not hit because that's an Electabuzz and that will completely obliterate Starmie. <laughs> I know that guy had an Electabuzz. Yeah, it's awful. Right, Amber also getting through uh, the Eta quiz. Uh, shocked Pikachu face right here. So t -Pad is coming out of Blaine at a 159 flat at 44 caught. That is an absurd time for Blaine. Uh, very, very, very easily 258 pace. And with a star as cracked as this, uh, you kind of think about... <laughs> kind of full sending it possibly even though this is the finals and uh safety is always on these runners minds to finish the race uh this is huge potential for t-pat yeah t-pat might just be saying like well if i can beat etchy's ev time like maybe i just go for it and this was all without a rival yeah can you imagine <laughs> saving back this 45 seconds for rhyhorn and like possibly even thinking about the about a 257 like 257 is absolutely possible needs up like incredible play good rng uh and like not just great start like, great ev and not missing missing hydro pumps, like so many things have to go right for a 257 but if they go right a 257 is doable yeah and not to say like not to diminish Amber or Headstrong, is T-Pat has been given like this opportunity essentially, and like is capitalizing on it as best as he can for sure. Uh, Amber exiting with a two-hour Blaine at 46 caught, very very solid, and then Headstrong coming out at uh, with 45 caught at roughly 201. It looks like with the nine tails still to go. So their runs are. Definitely great too. I yes, mean, absolutely. After all that stuff we said about T-Pat, Amber's run is really good, and mm -hmm. Headstrong's run is very strong as well. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down to Hydro Pumps and uh, Koga, is my guess. Well, and uh, Archer, but we always know it comes down to Archer. I'm a proponent of it comes down to Hydro Pumps more than anything. Missing bad hydro pumps can really eat away at your time. Yeah, there's not too much that you can do if you get RNG'd like that. But like, I am so happy that like, despite the adversity that all three of these runners have faced in their respective races, like all of them are putting up incredible times right now. This is definitely like the grand finals of grand finals for sure. 
Yeah, I agree. Is missing Rowlith is pretty huge for Pika, right? It is. You, yeah, the time save that you would have, like, in movement going from... Basically, you have an extra menu to do, as well as having to ride Rhyhorn instead of Arcanine through the entire Pokemon Road section. So that, and just, like, not getting anything on Route 7 after cutting the bush was a little bit of a damper on Amber's end, for sure. Yeah, if anything, I would say that the the only issue with Headstrong's run was that uh, her XP was just, like, very, very average. Um, not too much that you can do with without, like, exceptional attack or, like, exceptional experience on, on TPS end, but has managed to just continue on that very solid pace regardless. That is the, the fickle nature of Let's Go. The game gives you a run and you, you make the best opportunities that you can. Try capitalize on anything that the game can give you. Sometimes it doesn't three. give you a lot. <laughs> it but doesn't. Nope. But everyone here like knows like when it does happen, they are ready to pounce. And Amber is starting Lieutenant Surge. This is what we were talking about earlier. These trainers are completely blind. They cannot see you. We're not going to fight uh, any trainers uh, in, I think, I think like in the entire game, we fight like maybe four trainers in the whole gym and like all gyms, like maybe five and like three of them are in Giovanni's. This section's kind of a downtime because these trainers are so easy. Or not the trainers, but the gym leaders are so easy that, you know, you're, you're supposed to do these when you're level, what, 15 or something? <laughs> 20? And, like, you just blast through them with your level 46 Starmie. Yeah, rumor has it, once upon a time, uh, dig strats were a thing for Lieutenant Surge's gym over on Pika's side to get Thunderbolt early in the, mm. in the old one controller days that sounds so I've super heard. fun <laughs> it really speaks to like the evolution of the route and like gaining new information from like anubis's data mining learning new things about the run um like the fact that this route has like evolved and changed and gotten so much better over the years and even with like safety stress and e4 to ensure that you can finish a run uh, it's been really cool to see as like somebody who's like a relatively more recent uh, runner in the community. Like people put so much work into the not only just like running the game and getting the best times, but also optimizing the route and uh, enabling those those runs to happen. Yeah, it's pretty incredible the amount of iterations it's gone through. One of these days, maybe I'll go watch a, a super old world record. <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, to specifically Etiquette, who will be doing a ye oldie route of one player, one controller in in Let's Go for the upcoming uh, Pokemon Speedruns Marathon. So you'll get a little bit taste of what uh, the the old guard possibly has to offer there. What, the, what this run looked like? <laughs> what this run looked like six years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole this whole section of the game you're supposed to do like when you're like in like maybe like the high 20s. But uh, we come back and steamroll all these gyms at level 40. So we do the gyms very, very out of order. Yeah, thankfully, the the advent of uh, secret techniques and not relying on HM moves in this game uh, just allow you to kind of breeze through Kanto as a pseudo open world sort of deal which is very nice because if we can take a time save by not doing things in order, we will. Uh, T-Pack going for the fly optimization here. Uh, yeah. Actually, fairly recently safe. found out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving backwards a little bit to get under that awning, save like two seconds from not having the, the fly animation as you 
sky dash upward back to Celadon City. Be bad also talking to the guy there. Is it there. faster to do that? Yeah, I, I was wondering that. Unsure. I've never actually tried. Yeah, like I've never timed it. That's weird. I mean, you don't turn, I assume, because if you're just running straight, you turn to look at him, right? Yeah, you don't. It, it, yeah. You don't turn, and it doesn't. I don't think it does that like zoom in on the cutscene thing. Yeah, I'll, mm. I'll have to file that one away for later. We can see if Amber and Headstrong do it. Yeah, because the, the exit and entrance to those guardhouses are like pretty wide, so you don't even have to move that far when after talking to the dude. All right, so we're going to see some Fire Blast, right? Yeah, T-Pad has... Rapidash in slot two. Mm -hmm. T-Pad has forgone Dodrio, deposited it with Golduck in the same menu that he withdrew Pidgey. Um, saving on those levels, but uh, is forcing an 85% hit here on this Executor in return. Yeah, this Executor is the only Pokemon in the game that Starmie does not hit for at least neutral damage, so we do need a partner for this fight. Um, this is probably the most interesting uh, two-controller fight in the game. Uh, it is the only time where we kind of uh, use our first Pokemon to set up the second Pokemon. Uh, to attack with it. Um, normally you would use Dodrio on this fight and just drill peck it, but T-Pat's just too good and Fire Blast hits anyway. I did not see T-Pat's special attack at 46. I would assume that uh, Skull is a good range on this Charizard to skip over an X special attack, and that's exactly what we're going to see here. Scald and... Oh, no, X special attack here. Got it. I believe at 128 special attack, it is guaranteed. 125, it is a 15-16. Uh, so we'll, we'll start find out here at 47. Uh, 121. Okay, yeah. So definitely would have had to expect or pump that. So going for the, the safe strap. All right. T Pad is going to go head up the elevator to the fifth floor here to start uh, what is widely regarded as the worst fight in the game. Uh, this fight, there are so many things that can go wrong in this fight, and hopefully none of them happen to T-Pat. Yeah, this is one of the only fights in the game where you... Is this the only fight in the game where it is a, like, multi-battle with... Uh, yes, with this Trace? is the only true double, uh, in the game. Uh, two trainers versus two trainers. At least in the main game. I, I, don't, I don't know about post-game. Yeah, I, I've i not played <laughs> this game the, casually at all, but... Uh, the, the furthest I've gone in post-game is the Beat Red speedrun, where we defeat Red. Uh, an optional fight that uh, is very difficult. Uh, so, Self-Destruct Protect is a good opening. It's not the best opening, uh, but it is a good opening um, to start this fight off. Uh, 120, 122 for uh, Amber at level 47. Okay, not too far behind t Pat in terms of stats. Uh, one very critical thing, now that t Pat is pushing through Archer just fine, uh, is that t Pat is currently out of X special attacks. Um, normally, you will need to uh, save one X special attack for Giovanni 2 upcoming uh, in order to skull through the fight. t Pat may need to land a couple of pumps. Uh, if he wants to go for a slower backup, uh, funnily enough, there is one X special attack that's accessible in uh, in Sylphco, but it is on floor 1F where you fight blue, and it's below those fountains. Headstrong um, landing a pump on that Charizard uh, also uh, has the same stat, a uh, special attack, as uh, Amber's 122. Uh, unsure how many X special attacks Headstrong is, maybe is was a little more cognizant of uh, her battle items, or maybe just is trying to push some time save uh, this early. This is a brutal archer fight. Yeah, T-Pat uh, definitely Sheesh. not getting a great archer. Yeah, it, it, it has a lot to do with Trace just not cooperating at all. I feel like this happens to him, at least in all the races I've watched <laughs> of his yeah. specifically. 
Yeah, it does have to super here because this rack is going to quick attack the Starmie at this range for the KO. Cube Amber getting doing. the same opening as T-Pat, the Protect Self-Destruct. We'll see what uh, opening Headstrong gets. Uh, T-Pat is finally through Archer 2. And Headstrong is entering the exact same fight. Headstrong, or Amber getting through, and, and, and a, is that? That's okay, uh, and, Headstrong getting the best opening. Return Dream Gamba is alive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we do want to see, uh, okay, Golbat coming out second. Psychic is going to get that down, thankfully. Muck is not on the table. That's so actually no very good, because this means no that uh, the Cubone... Uh, will likely target the Eradicate here, hopefully with Bone Meringue. Uh, it could headbutt. If it decides to target the Golbat, it will headbutt due to Bone Meringue not being effective. Yeah, okay. So it was, um, it did target the, the Golbat there. Um, so for the three turn here, you need to get... Uh, you want him to focus energy on turn one, uh, and then Bone Meringue, uh, very likely to double crit and just wipe out the Eradicate in one hit. Yeah. Uh, Amber getting a similar endgame in this Archer fight to T-Pat is going to force a heal onto Starmie, unless that Starmie gets taken out by a quick attack. So D2. close to three turn. Yeah, I yep. believe that was a T-Bolt crit from Weezing onto the Starmie, which forced that super potion as well. And Headstrong is through. So uh, T-Pat Amber having rough Archer 2s, but... Uh, headstrong getting through it um, just fine. It was good. She needed to make up some ground. So mm -hmm. exactly. Not the T-Pat's still, T still solidly in the lead, uh, but they are all pretty much within, uh, I'd say, about forty-five seconds of each other. In fact, oh. Headstrong has now passed Amber uh, because of the evolution there. Um, Headstrong does still need to evolve two more Pokemon, though. Yeah, I would like probably estimate the time difference between Amber and Headstrong to be about 40 seconds in, Am in Amber's favor. Um, T-Pat is evolving uh, his second to last Pokemon here. Uh, T-Pat will still need to get a Pidgeot um, out of the Pidgeotto that's in his party. I'm curious what strategy T-Pat employs here for Giovanni now that he's done with the final Jesse and James fight, considering that he doesn't have that X special attack. Does he go for the pumps and try to Oko the Persian, Gold the Rhyhorn, pump the Nidoqueen? Nidoqueen is a very bulky Pokemon, even though it is weak to water as a part ground type. Uh, still very defensively bulky, so it does need a Hydro Pump to hit through. Uh, does the Nidoqueen... Uh, I, don't, I don't have the... AI teams up in front of me. Does the Nido Queen have Crunch? Uh, I can look it up real quick. I would not surpri be surprised if it does. Because uh, if it does, if it doesn't have anything that can kill you, uh, maybe you just take the extra turn and just scald it twice. But if it comes with like Crunch or like Mega Horn or something, like you, you cannot risk that. Uh, it looks like Body Slam and Crunch. Oh, okay. Nope. Yep. You just go for the pump then. <laughs> Not that you would ever get a let Rhyhorn get a turn, but oddly Rhyhorn does have Mega Horn. Yeah, I didn't know Rhyhorn had Mega Horn. I I don't know if Rhyhorn goes down to one Scald. It it should. Being yeah, it's double weak water to it. And, I can't imagine it lives. Yeah, and now because Starmie is like much higher level than like the roles have basically reversed where Ooh. we were we were lower level, etc. Uh, pump on the Persian is. Uh, does not get the range. Or not miss, um, but yeah, miss the range. Yeah, so it's likely that T-Pat's going to need to take a heal going into the Sabrina fight. Yeah, like Skull should just one-shot this Rhyhorn here. Um, the, the, the issue is going to be this uh, Nido Queen. Although I think at this HP, it's level 39. It's, uh, I, you probably die to the crunch here. Yeah, it's. I would say that this is a range to die. 
Uh, but it does land the pump, so it yep. doesn't even matter. Yep, T Pat's uh, so the just only, too good. Yeah, so the only time lost here would have been the the missed pump turn and then the the heal menu post fight. So not too much time lost, thankfully. Um, wonder if T Pat's gonna do some menu optimizations when he heals Starmie to get uh, his X items in order. A T Pat almost uh, forgetting to grab the Master Ball. Uh, you cannot leave this room without grabbing the Master Ball, uh, even though we don't need it. Uh, we, we're done with catching. We don't need to catch anything. So uh, you do have to uh, get the Master Ball before you leave. All right, T Pat is going to go pick up. Uh, the free Lapras and the free rare candy that just happened to be on this floor. Uh, Lapras first. So I like to do the rare candy first and grab Does the Lapras. It make a out. No, it's it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, Team not grabbing the rare candy actually. Yeah, I guess the star is good enough. Uh. Oh, yeah, because he didn't use one on a Ponita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Okay, so t Pad actually yeah. not needing the rare candy. So. Good call, Sandy. I totally would have picked it up and just <laughs> been like, oh, I'm an extra level. Dump the extra candy in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't even want to use the extra rare candy because that would all but guarantee turnarounds on the earlier members of the Elite Four. Turnarounds, which we saw on t Pat's side on EV <laughs> due to it being like absolutely <laughs> cracked, uh, occur when your, your Pokemon loves you very much and turns around and looks for validation at you whenever it lands a super effective hit or it gets healed in battle. Uh, Slow, two seconds for every occurrence. Uh, want to use minimal special like X specs and stuff on your on your star to alleviate that. Rare candies, I believe, give five friendship points. Every X item gives one friendship point, and then you just gain passive friendship just by walking around in the field. Yeah, on Eevee version, there uh, you can't do this on uh, Pika version just because of uh, how certain things work with Jolteon being very fast and very bulky. Um, in the EV version, you actually can skip turnarounds late in the game uh, by doing uh, different rare candy strats, but you need a very, very good star me to be able to do that. Or you need a Chansey so that you don't have to use an additional rare candy and you can level up star me naturally. Yeah, uh, if you actually gain one level in uh, Mansion via like a Chansey or uh, like a Super Size Magmar, um, you can skip turnarounds for the entirety of the run. Uh, just by doing the normal rare candy strat, and uh, I would say uh, that you at least skip Agatha turnarounds because you do also get you will get turnarounds friendship. on champion. You you do right. get them on champion. Yeah, just if you do it, the, uh, if you do it that strat. Yeah, the uh, the major event battles will also grant your Pokemon your party friendship. Yeah, but there is the only uh, there's only one turnaround on uh, champion um, unless you go for the plus two on uh, the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, plus two people. Yep. So you'd, you'd save a total of, like, two seconds, maybe four. It'll be interesting to see how Amber and T-Pat sync up as they exit Saffron Gym, due to the fact that T-Pat still has that Pidgeotto to evolve into Pidgeot and is ahead on Teleporter movement right now. Yeah, so this Pidgeotto is going to evolve. It's going to have to evolve on this fight. Um, should get there. I uh, can't imagine a world where it doesn't. And Headstrong 2C Specialist here uh, is skipping the X Special Defense. Um, uh, as Headstrong has mentioned, uh, she has put a lot of time and effort into researching two controller strats for the entirety of the run and has counted it out to be only 6 to 16 seconds slower depending on if Lapras dies in E4. Um, so is just kind of banking on riding the tailwind of uh, Amber and T-Pat uh, as they find it out. an X attack there by accident. Uh, this, I think it should still be fine. Light screen should run out on 
the turn that T-Pat KOs the Mr. Mime. Yes. Uh, the special defense yep. drop here makes things a little bit interesting. Uh, Mine needs to heal, but probably... No, there's no way he needs to heal, right? No. 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 So uh, life screen wears if out on this the screen. X speed, you don't need to heal at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So still a standard fight, just waste, and waste a turn. Uh, also, notably, because of the extra X item usage there... Uh, actually, never mind, because this extra X item usage gets cancelled out by the fact that he didn't use one on Giovanni. Correct. So, friendship is still, uh, still level as of right now for T-Pat. We'll get to see T-Pat's stats here um, after the slow bro, it looks like. Is Amber ahead because of the Evo that has to happen? Uh, I would really probably close. say... Uh, yeah, maybe not with that burn. Yeah, I would say they're like step for step now. Yeah. It's going to come down to... All Kaden. three more runners on Sabrina at the same time. This, this is such a good close race. Mm-hmm. Uh, Starmie, 127, 136. Um, so T-Pat will, even with that uh, extra X item, uh, T-Pat's uh, um, Starmie is actually going to outspeed the uh, rival's Pidgeotto in the final rival fight, so you should be able to skip that X speed. So uh, not actually can get that turn back um, later. 122 you said one, one. special attack for Amber, which is pretty mid, like literally. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be some choices for some ranges coming up. Yeah, with 127 for T-Pat at 48, that will guarantee the Skull range on Venomoth as soon as he rare candies uh, his star. Probably jump up to like 130 or something. Uh, so can save on a Psychic there. One or two Psychics there. Just thinking about <laughs> elixir usage and PP management and understanding that you absolutely need to save a psychic for that Venusaur in Victory Road. All right, T-Pat going to heal uh, here, uh, actually using the elixir. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm a big Pretty proponent standard. of late elixir, elic a late elixir but um, if you know you're going to be able to get a couple Scald Ranges in uh, Koga's Gym, then it's absolutely worth it to elixir here. See some stats over on this side. 130, 139 for T-Pat. Mm, uh, gonna have to X speed in the fight, right? Against the rival? No. Uh, no, uh, wait, no, no, that's a lot later. later. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you'll get one more level and you'll outspeed yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, notably, uh, Star not only does Starmie gain a level, but also gains another friendship threshold. So those stats will be boosted even higher at that point. Yeah, so T-Bat's looking like they can skip some X items and uh, kind of save a couple turns here and there. Yeah, but after that evolution, Amber and T-Pat are essentially like both in the, the gold teeth cutscene at the same time. It's I would a say five that's about second th difference. I that think. is wild <laughs> that's really just like one or two protects probably two. remember when i yeah, said that i would love to see uh, like runners sinks two two and a half hours into the game well we're seeing it right now yep and and headstrong is not that far behind either yeah 128 133 guarantees venomoth scald range uh but not much else unfortunately All right, uh, we're coming up on the Caden fight. This is uh, kind of the big equalizer here in this gym. And both runners are on Caden at the same time. This, this is actually nuts. The variance in this fight is just so wild for just them having two Pokemon. Like it can go super quick or this can be the worst fight you run. Yeah, this fight's either three turns or like 12. <laughs> Yeah, and T-Pat's getting a pretty solid Caden run over here. Uh, Toxic, I think Amber's just going to go for this um, to try and avoid minimize cringe. Uh, yeah, Muck probably would have minimized on that turn due to it not doing protects. So Amber's going to need to take a little bit of time out of battle to heal this, but I think to, to minimize potential time loss, further time loss, this is okay from Amber. And did not get any protects there on the B drill either. So this this is very very good. 
So we'll lose a little bit of time to having to heal that poison off and probably um, dump a potion on there just to be at full health, but um, elixir in here as well. Too. Protect turn one. Love it. Hopefully the drill is nice. Very Easy. Nice. Um, all three of our runners getting fantastic Caden fights, so uh, hopefully uh, Koga treats our runners well. I've not been paying attention to defensive stats, uh, mostly because we've been looking at special attack and speed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see like, if we get like Toxic Explosion possibly from a Weezing, uh, especially since Amber does have chip damage from uh, two ticks of Toxic right now. Ebat going for the Scald gets it on the Weezing. I think t -Pat's just going to go for the full Scald version of this fight. No Protect so far on t -Pat either. Yeah, you can Scald right into the Scald that that's coming up and then flip over to Psychic for the final muck. Not one word. We're holding, we're holding our breath here. Uh, Headstrong is getting Toxics by Weezing, so it needs to spend one turn to heal that. Uh, oh. Teapot does get the one Protect from, from the Muff, but still overall, like, honestly, a really exceptional Koga. That is a phenomenal Koga fight. Sub 230 Koga. Oh my gosh. Look how happy Eevee is. Uh, yeah, and Amber is... is now through uh, Koga. And Headstrong is finishing up Koga as well. Yeah, this is still like at like at median, like low 3 0 pace for T-Pat right now. Too many protects for Headstrong. Hate to see yeah. it. Yeah. One one more protect for the road, Koga says. Uh, uh. But again, even even with that gym, all of our runners are about what? Separated by maybe 30 minute. seconds? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, and all it takes is for one of one of the front runners to, to trip up because the other one is right on their tail and it creates a cascading effect where Headstrong is absolutely not out of this race yet. Uh, there is a uh, another big equalizer fight coming up in uh, two fights. Uh, we'll have to see how each one of them handles that fight. Amber making... Uh, their way to uh, Viridian Gym. Yep, this is Viridian City. I always like I mix up Viridian Pewter like way more than I should, honestly. <sighs> oh no! It's a surprise here. Oh my God, it's his grandson uh i believe amber did buy the x defend <laughs> all right so everyone putting on the max repel so we will not see any more wild pokemon for the rest of the run uh so uh that's it uh who who got the most shinies uh in in the uh in the race uh we'll go to our organizers on that <laughs> <laughs> uh the only one i remember was the uh shiny metapod that spawned on uh etchy mm -hmm. and uh, i do know from it oh gosh was it was it yoxo that got a shiny geodude yes went back for the shiny geodude actually heck yeah 
I PB'd yesterday and I got a shiny Weedle that evolved to shiny Beedrill. And that was the first time I saw shiny Beedrill. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I've never gotten a useful shiny in this game. Uh, I got a Butterfree uh, one time. Not a Butterfree, a Caterpie that I took to Butterfree uh, back when we used Butterfree for the uh, uh, the first Team Rocket fight, the first uh, Team Rocket double. Last year, uh, I tied my last year's PB with a, with a shiny pony. Uh, it's very beautiful, uh, but unfortunately, like, time loss whenever you send it in battle oh, because shit. of the, the shiny yeah. animation. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a shiny Rhyhorn one time, and I got to learn that it loses you 16 seconds. Lovely. <laughs> uh, t doing a really cool trap here, uh, having the two-player block uh, Samuel from walking up. So this fight is an uh, kind of a kind of one of those equalizer fights. Uh, there's two ways to do this fight. Um, you can either uh, hydro pump and hope it hits and takes out this Nido King, or you can do what T Pat's doing uh, and do a two controller version of this fight. Yeah, T Pat being above, uh, I think was at 130 special attack, uh, is guaranteed to have Psychic and Stomp kill this Nido King outright. Just, hydro pump's guaranteed for Amber. Well, you know, if it hits. <laughs> Knock mm. on wood. Yeah. Essentially, what T Pat's doing here is he is forcing Amber to, to match his pace. Nice. Um, and basically, we'll probably opt to do maybe some riskier stress later on the line if Amber gets a little bit too close. Uh, T Pat getting caught by Black Belt Takashi. Uh, you, you have to do one of these two fights here. These two guys that are kind of not really looking at each other. Um, we fight this guy who has a graveler because the guy below him has a sand slash uh that has protect and that would be slow so we just fight this guy uh both fights are one turn it doesn't matter uh, but this guy does not have protect so uh, this fight is always one turn uh headstrong also uh gonna one controller this fight i think she's gotta right and this yeah, is I not the the most dangerous one see like, this is not too bad. Usually you can survive a hit if it misses. Um, and she has enough special attack. Uh, does have chip damage, notably. Uh, still has the higher chip pump, but might have been a little bit iffy if uh, Headstrong had to tank a Mega Horn there. Yeah. Uh, and that chip coming from the, the Toxic that she got from Weezing turn one on Koga. It looks like both uh, Amber and T-Pat are going to one controller uh, Giovanni. Do we know their defense on their stars? Uh, I have one screenshot of t -Pat's defense, I believe. Uh, that was from a very long time ago. Uh, probably at about like 97 defense right now for t -Pat, if I had to estimate. Uh, but both through the fight and both oh, at- Oh, Amber oh, yeah, Amber's here. gonna have to heal. Oh, that was only, that was turn two. Uh, but uh, they are both through the fight now. Um, the Doug Trio uh, specifically uh, is one of the only Pokemon in the game that outspeeds you, but uh, if you set up an X Defend, it can't kill you without critting, so. One thirty four, one forty four for T Pat. So T Pat will be able to skip the X speed on uh, the upcoming rival fight. And then for Amber's side, 130, 132. Try and think of ranges in Victory Road that this would be applicable for. This is probably, you can safely double T bolt the Hypno and it'll hit that range. Um, and then Hydro Pump's guaranteed on the Jinx. But that's just about it. Uh, 132 also lets you save a Psychic on, on Nelson, notably. So you don't have to worry about super effective text there. Uh, on um, Mion Dawson. On uh, yeah. So you you can psychic or you can sculpt the lick a tongue, and then you don't yeah. have to you you just mash down the line on Bruno. Yeah, the uh, it should also be guaranteed on Nelson for the double T bolt on the uh, Hypno as well. Right. Nelson Dawson. Why do all of them end in S O N? Yeah. <laughs> they all sound the same to me, honestly. Why, why are we running any percent? Because then, then we just wouldn't have to worry about these fights at all. 
132, so uh, matching Amber's special attack there for Headstrong can do the exact same things in Victory Road. Has those options available to her. Yeah, Amber and Headstrong have almost the same Starmie. DP is a lie. <laughs> one was 1090 something and one was like 1030 yeah. something. Yeah, if you if you ever wondered uh, if CP is a lie, that is uh, that right there tells it. I will note that Headstrong Star is significantly more tanky defensively than Amber Star. It looks like more uh, of that went into defense on Headstrong side. Uh, so probably can save a heal turn going into the Dawson fight more like more consistently than Amber would with with their star. Could also honestly with that defense, you could opt to one C Naomi and I think you tank two hits. But I'm not entirely sure. I think at this point you just gotta try, right? Yeah, there's... You, you've got nothing left to lose at this point if you're yeah. headstrong. Yep. All three runners are on Rival 5, 2 hours, 37 minutes into the game. Yes, T-Pat was able to skip the X speed. Uh, unfortunately, Headstrong will not be able to do that. Uh, the skipping the X speed on this fight is only doable in Eevee version. If you have 140 speed, you will outspeed that Raichu. Um, which is very important. It has thunder, it can one-shot you, um, so you always have to X speed so you're faster than the Raichu when it comes out on turn three. Um, but on Pikachu version, uh, the rival does not have a Raichu. It has a Jolteon, which is way faster than a Raichu, and you cannot avoid uh, getting outsped there, so you have to set up an X speed on this fight in Pikachu version. All right, I'm going to retract my last statement on Headstrong Star. Uh, double Mineral Crunch from Kangaskhan kills the star. Oof. So, uh, <laughs> so no chance of it living two hits, unfortunately. Well, just kill it on the first hit then. Mm -hmm. Like, don't miss. <laughs> simply Easy. land, simply land the eighty percent accurate move. Eighty percent of the time, it works. Sixty percent of the time, <laughs> <laughs> based on your special attack. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Uh, t pad I think uh, the special attack's good enough for this fight. I mean, you could one controller Naomi and just go for the the kind of safe one controller version of this fight where you just scald turn one, and if you get the burn, you just keep going. If not, you just summon second player. can't imagine he does that, though. If he did yeah. 2C for uh, Geo's gym against what's-his-name? Um, Samuel. Yeah, Samuel. I don't know, though. Yeah, it's like T Pat's got a decent buffer, but obviously that can that can very well change depending on uh how safe he plays, how risky Amber plays, and if they're rewarded for it. We got a better gauge as we exit Victory Road. Alright. Alright, uh, yeah, we're going for the one controller. Yeah, this is this is guaranteed for T Pat. For Amber and Headstrong, it would be a 14-16 uh if the hydro pump hits for both of their respective stars due to 132 special attack. Yeah, with 126 HP, the star does not lift two hits. Oh. Ugh, does easy. land the pump. Easy. Oh, there's, okay. there's always the chance that that Kangaskhan can just go for Sucker Punch and you won't even have a... You can't even get an attack there. Amber opting for 2C here completely respect the play uh, yeah understanding the risk involved thinking that is not worth it and hoping to make up time a little bit later on down the line oof good thing did 2c here missed that range unfortunately amber did elixir late um, so I'm pretty sure that they still have psychics to spare for for the Venusaur I didn't catch their count but that probably was a two. And then this last one yep. gets used on the Venusaur. And then Headstrong already having that 2C out. 
not taking any chances, just kind of banking on the hopes that uh, either waiting that, that both Amber and T-Pat trip themselves up somewhere along the way. And just waiting in the wings, uh, we'll be able to take advantage in case anything happens uh, to either of these runners. Uh, I've plenty ooh, of times before in this tournament, too. Oh, absolutely. Especially with the sleep onto Starmie. Uh, T-Pat is going to go for the, the double T-Bolt here. That was a crit, interestingly enough. Oh, that almost um, killed with a crit, too. That's crazy. Uh, thankfully, Slowbro does not have any priority moves, is not the Galarian version, does not have Quick Draw, so T-Bolt will kill, and then Starmie will be healed up in time for the next fight. Ooh, avoids the sleep for Amber. Oh, very, very clutch. Uh, uh, unfortunately, JK, he goes though. for hypnosis again. <laughs> Does have to heal that sleep off. Uh, did go for Dream Eater, though, so that's that's fine. Just uh, no, not taking any damage there, so. Yeah, but unfortunately is matched by T-Pat on that fight, um, so is not able to, to get any lead off of there. Amber has to wait for this spinner guy to turn. Um, don't know his name. He does have an Onyx. I always forget he exists until I'm right there. And then yes. I slam the brakes. Let's <laughs> say so Amber talking to Officer Jenny here uh, is a free heal. Um, so our party is now fully healed. Uh, a little scuffed. Uh, Alexa passed there, but uh, T-Pat threw uh, Alexa. Better safe uh, than sorry, for sure. Yep. Headstrong, unfortunately, getting the T-Bolt paralysis on the Hypno, uh, costing like a fraction of a second in status lag. Uh, the reason why you'd want to go for T-Bolt over Scald is because T-Bolt has less of a chance to uh, inflict a status condition 10% over 30%. Uh, Headstrong actually getting the good spinner cycle on there. Um, uh, the non cringe one. Oh, T Pat oh. getting frozen, but on knows, the setup turn. Uh, knows but, his BGC mechanics. Scald does call you. Doesn't even lose any time there because Scald ends up critting the Jinx out of out of freezing. That's Starmie out for vengeance wow. against the Jinx. Yeah, it's literally crazy. loses no time for for getting frozen there absolutely wild. Amber heading into the same fight is going to have to set up an X special attack on the Jinx. Does not get frozen on their side, but instead has to land a pump, which does hit. This is the one race where we didn't have the getting frozen Gamba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only and time it would have hit. All, all three racers threw all the crazy trainer skips, so uh, two fights left for Amber and... Uh, headstrong, uh, T-Pat uh, about to start the final trainer fight in the game, or the the final like random trainer fight. Uh, Amber is uh, now through uh, Caroline. Yeah, that's her name, Caroline. Yes. And Headstrong laying this pump as well. So honestly, like, even though we had a freeze on T Pat's side, uh, all runners uh, step for step on that Caroline fight. I did not get to see Headstrong stats there, but uh, I think they're very close to Amber's. T Pat yelling out power, channeling his inner Mirio Togata from My Hero Academia, powering <laughs> through that freeze and critting the, the Jinx in return. That's gotta be like top five highlights, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. All right, it's so oh. T-Pat about to start the Dawson fight. This was the first trainer that ended up creating this category. Uh, nice power whip. Uh, you you can skip all these fights in Victory Road in a completely different category. Uh, it requires like special Joy Cons to buy and like special setups and stuff. So uh, we just decided to split the the boards. Um, 
T-Pat's special attack here is good enough. Uh, can skip using Psychic on that Lickitung. Uh, will save a turn later. Uh, save some super effective techs later uh, in the run. Yeah, I believe all three of these stars are good enough to uh, to skull the Lickitung here. Uh, Amber did hit 132 there off of Caroline, and I believe... Oh, that is really big. Uh, uh, Amber power with this. Yes, that is really oh. big. So Amber might not have to heal going into Lorelei, uh, whereas T-Pat does need to heal going into Lorelei. Yeah, I would say this is probably... Considering that Amber is 132 special attack, I don't believe that's good enough to... Like go for any favorable ranges on Lorelei. So this is probably set up to plus six and then uh, deposit Rapidash and heal on before Bruno. Alternatively, I'm looking at the uh, range line right now. That is a 12 and 16 on Lapras for at 132 and that forces a Hydro Pump on the Jinx. I did not catch T-Pat's special attack recently, but I would imagine that he has a favorable range on the Lapras, but might need to to pump the Jinx. T-Pat going over. for two controller strats. Interesting. Pulling uh, out the Dodrio. Forcing Amber to 1C. Well, not forcing, I guess, but giving them the opportunity. Yeah, I believe that as far as just pure, like, bird fish strats for Lance and Champ, uh, 2C is like a, you need like a 24 to 26 second buffer as 2C in order to secure the win, essentially. Um, so t feeling a little bit confident with his buffer that uh, he can outpace Amber regardless of safe strats or no safe strats. That could also just be pulling out the Dodrio and planning to one controller everything and just saying, you know what, um, if I need it, it's there. Uh, if I don't, uh, then I'm just going to keep going one controller. Yeah, then you would just lose the what, one second from the closing animation of depositing your Pokemon. This yeah, does look or... like plus four from T-Pat, by the way. Yep. The HP. Does hit the Lapras. Uh, and we'll... I'm not sure what the Scald range is, but it should be favorable. Um, you should Scald over Hydro Pump at 139 special attack, and it looks like T-Pad is less than that, so it lands the Hydro Pump on the Jinx. So very solid lower life fight coming out from T-Pad right here. Uh, unless uh, our runners want to uh, try and save a ton of time on Lorelei, uh, that is actually the last Hydro Pump in the run. Or uh, save a bunch of time on Agatha. Sorry, not Lorelei. I was like, huh? Yeah, no. Unless you want to save a ton of time on Agatha, that will be the final Hydro Pump of the run. Amber also matching T-Bat here, uh, doing plus four, is at 46 HP right now. Um, I should note that Onyx Earthquake will... I think this is safe for Earthquake for, for Amber. I think they had 97... at least 98 defense, possibly. Um, so a max roll at 99 defense does 46 damage. So Amber would be left on, uh, assuming no max roll, one HP from like a a 15, oh. any 15, 16 rolls there. That's just a little too close. So we'll see if Amber menus here. Uh, Amber no. does not menu here. All right. Oh. So assuming that Starmie doesn't get 1 in 16 by the Onyx here, um, it's time. This is it. T-Pad like is we all... also in the red. T-Pad does have that 2C out. Uh, I guess did not get Stealth Rock turn 1 from the Onyx instead of getting Earthquake. Amber Starmie's got level Stealth Rocks. Beautiful. All right, so uh, Amber is out and in the clear. And Headstrong I, is also through uh, Lorelei as well. All three of our runners are going to be on Bruno at the same time. Goodness. Two hours, 51 minutes in, all three of them on the same fight. 
Uh, T-Pat might actually finish uh, Bruno before. Oh no. Uh... Is faint real, everybody? Nope. Well, the, I don't. T-Pat. No, I wouldn't have killed anyway. Faint does like I think like thirteen damage or something. Uh, depends on your defense, but yeah, something around there. Uh, I will I will note that Amber played that maybe a little bit more risky than normal. Uh, I mean, considering this finals and all, that was less than 97 defense at, at level 51 going into the fight, which means that Earthquake was probably like a one in four to kill. That's Starmie. Team had two seeing Agatha. Yeah, this is the bird or fish strat, being able to power through Agatha in five turns. Um, and I'm looking at Headstrong's HP right now, and we're we're about to... Hey, Here we hold on go. to your Ryan chat. <laughs> Here we go. The champ goes down. Already level 52 here, so didn't get a chance to see Headstrong stats here. And Amber is going in with 1C, needs to make up that extra time, hoping for a a good permutation of the the Ag of the fight, maybe getting a, an early power of love. Headstrong clicks Psychic on the Hitmonlee at 7 HP, and Faint is not real, folks. <sighs> I'm sweating. <laughs> Amber getting kind of the normal fight here. Paralysis, Crunch restore yada yada uh, defense fall on this turn is totally fine go back quick attack even at minus one is no chance to uh, to KO this army so it should mm -hmm. power through the fight just fine now yeah the only thing you lose is the time on the text box so uh amber is through this fight headstrong also gonna one controller this fight oh no sorry two controller i didn't see her have the second player out no, Headstrong not buying X special defense here uh, is forced to control this fight. Even if like you set up really well in the Arbok, there's always the chance that uh, you might get forced into a situation where you need to uh, X special defense on Weezing in a one controller fight. Um, and Headstrong is the the proud soldier of two controller strats, strongest warrior indeed. Pat heading into the Lance fight. With Dodrio, this fight, uh, you open with 1C and then summon the second controller such that Dodrio won't get obliterated by Cedra's like, Hyper Beam or, or Hydro Pump. You'll set up in X speed and then start pumping X specs into Starmie to, to push through the fight. Uh, Lapras will, is a little bit on the tankier side, so, um, can just, you can just go right into the fight and be totally fine. Hyper Beam open is fine. Uh, this allows T-Pat to get an additional X special attack off and an attack off on the Cedra, and which means that you can set up instead on the Aerodactyl, saving an extra 2C turn there. And also with that, uh, looks like Headstrong is going to be through the Agatha fight as well. So uh, all three runners are going to be on uh, this. Uh, all three runners are going to be on Lance at the same time. Mm -hmm. All eyes on Amber's star right now as they go into their first X special attack setup. Uh, we have not seen any hyper beams so far. The Cedra has just been throwing dragon pulses and hydro pumps. Amber's way, uh, that is possibly heal range for Hyper Beam on Amber's side, yep. so it is going to Hyper Push yeah. in here. And then one more X special attack should seal the deal here. Um, I don't know. Oh, uh, actually gets Hyper Beam here, which is really good, lets you heal, so now you don't have to heal going into the champ fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we saw, um, Amber's special attack is not likely going to hit the 140 threshold for the Dragonite. Uh, <laughs> we'll probably be hovering around the 138 
mark, which is going to be a 15 and 16, I believe. We'll see on the level up on this Gyarados here. As you can see on Headstrong side, you can just go right into the fight with 2C Lapras. Um, a super potion on the Lapras would be ideal here to have it tank an Air Slash and Quick Attack from the Pidgeot. 137 is a 14 and 16 on this Dragonite. Yeah. All right, T-Pat is going to head into the final fight in the game. Uh, surprise, it is our rival. If you've never played Gen 1 before, it's always your rival. Amber clicks Psychic. And is through. Beautiful. So this is going to come down to can T-Pat beat the rival before Amber can. Uh, Amber might be going one controller strats here for this fight. Oh, Amber is absolutely going one C here. Yeah, no way, right? No way they pull out yeah. a second Pokemon. I mean... I guess we could have like a Pidgeot considering... miss or something. Yeah, considering the considering the cutscenes here, this may actually be a little bit too far behind for Amber to uh, capitalize on a possible uh, Dodrio living here. So it looks like Amber is uh, Amber is going to Yeah, I think like Amber is conceding first place to T-Pat here. Um, so as long as this Pidgeot doesn't do anything really weird. Starmie avoids Air Slash, so that effectively locks in T-Pat as the winner of our Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee tournaments in 2024. Amber and Headstrong repping the Lapras, T-Pat getting that final level up on the Dodrio. Um, but as things stand, uh, it looks like T-Pat is in prime position to uh, grasp first place. Yeah, I think T-Pat is going to lock it up here. Uh, T-Pat just going through the motions now. Uh, just a couple more Pokemon left on uh, the rival side. Yeah, the only way that the fight can go really wrong with Dodrio or a fish is if uh, Pidgeot essentially crits the the Starmie turn one and forces a revive essentially um but the chances of that are exceptionally minuscule it's it's honestly like you'd expect dojo to go down to an air slash And all three of the runners are on uh, champion at the same time. Headstrong getting the perfect two controller champion fight. Uh, mm -hmm. Lapras dying immediately uh, on the turn. I keep forgetting that <laughs> Eevee only has to step to plus four, so didn't even yep. have to heal the Lapras. Actually optimal for, for her. Yeah, and on uh, Pikachu version, uh, the uh, Jolteon is a little bulkier than the Raichu, so uh, you either have to rely on a Hydro Pump hit or set up to plus six. So, uh, But that is going to be it. T-Pat is through the fight, and T-Pat is going to be the 2024 Let's Go Any% percent No Mount Skips champion. Congratulations to T-Pat. Yeah. This is well fought. Might I remind you that this is yet another run where T-Pat went Rhyhornless and has achieved basically a high 3 double O. It's incredible. Yeah, the amount of consistency that um, all these runners have put up, but like T-Pat especially, um, has, has proved fruitful and is is rewarded for for going through time and time again facing hardship after adversity and locking himself in as the winner of the grand finals and amber getting through the fight locking themselves into second place and headstrong hitting the the final t-bolt onto the slow bro finishing in a very respectable third not too far behind all three of these runners are sub 302. Uh, T Pat with the 30044 to finish out this tournament. Such a good race. And I'm glad we got to see like 
no bad EVs, right? No minus attack, no special attack, like stuff like that. So it was actually a, a good race in that regard. Um, all the stars were at least decent. So, I mean, you can see by how close they finished to each other. This is incredible. So GG's to these runners. Yeah, this was Amber. a phenomenal finals. Absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't have it any other way. Amber Amber said they're going to run to the bathroom and then they will uh, join the call. But yeah, I mean, it, it, all three of our runners were pretty much synced up almost the entire time. Like that is just so crazy uh, how close everyone was the entire time. And we are joined uh, by the 2024 Let's Go uh, Any Percent uh, No Mount Skips champion at Thomas Patrick WX. Congratulations. Congratulations on winning grand finals without Rhyhorn. Oh my god, thank you so much. I I was I'm like actually in tears. Like I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. T Pat, that was an absolutely crazy run. Uh you were on insane pace early on. Uh, the Rhyhorn not spawning was uh, kind of unfortunate, but uh, man, that Eevee that you had. <laughs> that, was, that was by far the best Eevee I've had this tournament. I mean, <laughs> considering the first four rounds, they were unrunnable, and then it was just like neutral, okay. Uh, but yeah, like insane special attack. Uh, and even without Rhyhorn, I, I actually left uh, Rocket hideout on pv pace i was still like 20 seconds to the good that's actually nuts. knowing that i was probably gonna bleed that back without rhyhorn but i i couldn't believe I, I just couldn't believe this whole run i mean not only no rhyhorn but no ponyta in this run it's <laughs> <laughs> just uh oh, i can't you believe it you, had, you were forced into rapid ash I ignored the first rapid ash and then yes. I saw the second one and I was like I have this long trek down like the water area and I was like Sive. Sive it's time, I just gotta do it. Um be and I so my decision making there was if I just got ponytail like normal, I had to I still had to catch Magmar and not Tentacle because I was really only on 49 planned, because without Rhyhorn I was on an odd count. So I needed one extra Pokemon. So when I decided Rapidash, it was okay, no Magmar, but yes to Tentacool, and that fixed quote fixed it. But yeah, and I, I think there was was something Dynam said in the, the last uh, round where it was just something about like adversity and just seeing every single situation, and knowing that I had no Rhyhorn again, it was like, all right, here we go again. Um, but it, the nerves were definitely starting to get to me because I was definitely starting to make some mistakes at around Sylph Co. Just like really sloppy errors from the using one too many X special attacks. And I, because of that, my X items were out of order. So I actually wasted a turn on Sabrina because I had to, I accidentally X attacked. Uh, and it's just all these little things where it was just like, just trying to calm myself down um, was very, very difficult. It all I'm, came together can, when can it mattered. Can you tell right? that I'm full of adrenaline right now? Like, oh no, absolutely not. I, I like can't control my emotions. I'm like yelling. I'm crying. I'm, I'm in ecstasy. It's just we are I'm also joined. To be like this, uh, right? <laughs> we are also joined by our second and third place competitors, uh, New Amber and Headstrong. Congratulations, guys! Yeah. That was an absolutely fantastic finals. Thank you, thank you, thank I think you. First thing I want to say, who remembers Barrier Blitz three years ago when nobody had a sub-302 and it took like months and months of community effort to get one, finally? Who remembers that? Look how far we've come. Look at all three of you sub-302ing in like the most high-stakes race this year. Yeah, when, I, when I first learned this game, uh, we all thought sub-302 was impossible and you guys just made it look so easy. I mean, what a race. First of all, GG to both uh, T-Pat and Headstrong. I mean, that was an incredibly close race the whole way through, it felt like. It was... Yeah, GG. If I, if I forgot Dang. to say GG to you too, like, incredible race, Headstrong Amber. Like, thank you so much for 
for what a what a wild ride that was. <laughs> what a wild ride it was. Um, I guess just talking about my run more specifically, my run was like really good to the end of Rock Tunnel, like sub threeable to the end of Rock Tunnel, and it was like if I just got like one of Puff or Growlithe, it would have been like fine. Because Puff still, like, getting Puff there still saved me, like, would have saved me, like, quite a bit of time. And then I got, like, I literally just didn't get Puppy or Puff the entire run, somehow. So yeah, it was you're, like... You even reset the route, too. Yeah, I mean, it's just so likely. It's so likely to get one of those two things that it's just, like, it's worth the time sink if you can get it. But, I mean, other than that, I actually felt like that run was pretty good. But it's just, like, that one thing. Oh, I guess Route 17, I had to wait a fair bit, okay, we're just getting, like, only Ponyta and Pidgey. So I don't know if uh, you had the... Uh, well, I know you had the stream up, uh, but I don't know if you had the commentary up. Um, I did not, no. You and Headstrong had almost the exact same Starmie. Uh, you, I believe you both had the same special attack at one point, uh, and you both had, like, almost the same speed. Yeah, it's just like Headstrong's extra combat power went directly into defense. And that's basically <laughs> everything. I'm pretty sure neither my starter nor my starmy understood its assignment of what the heck a nature is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your lonely Eevee rolled one attack AV in its cycle. Mm -hmm. I rolled it. like one or two special attack AVs on the starmy. Huge. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. I, I had naive for the special defense av as my very first av so that was we, we did see that and that was <laughs> exceptionally <laughs> i was so confused something. when i saw 13 special defense i was like what is this <laughs> <laughs> oh man I what a phenomenal I'll what a phenomenal finale uh, yeah, that was that was absolutely wonderful <laughs> to be a part of just just glad i could could represent and, and hold my own because I know Amber and I have had some some amazing races. Uh, we haven't, uh, I will... we haven't uh, touched on Headstrong's run. Uh, Headstrong, at one point you had 60 Pokemon planned, I think. Yeah, I ended up with a lot of catches in the mid game, but oh my god, was the early game RNG terrible before that mm. all happened. I was like a minute and a half behind where I expected to be leaving Cerulean. Or even getting to rival uh, to have boat rival, I was like a minute and a half behind a boat rival, and then all of a sudden, just Pokemon kept showing up. I had the Abra, and then I got everything on uh, Route Ten, everything in Rock Tunnel. <laughs> the immediate Rhyhorn and Tunnel was uh, really, really good. Mm -hmm. I was concerned about my health when I was in Rock Tunnel because I was like, oh, "I'll be fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch something and then do a menu." And then I saw nothing, and I was like, "Okay, I'll just go fight the trainer." And I forgot I was at like 18 health going into the Slowpoke. I was like, "It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Slowpoke can't do anything." Uh, uh, yeah, anymore. Slowpoke doesn't have any like real moves. <laughs> It'll just growl you anyways. Yeah. In fact, I think that's exactly what it did. <laughs> oh, and 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 faint does not exist. I still have never seen it ever. Nope. I think. I, th I know Aspect has seen it, and I think Randall's seen it. I think that's it. Yeah, well, a couple others. Did yeah. yeah. all I, three of us have death chances on Bruno? Because I went into yeah. Bruno with a chance to die to Earthquake. Yeah, I think you had a one in four to die. Yeah, I, I knew like, it was like I knew it was also likely it could use Stealth Rock because I was going in mm. with the Rapidash in the back. So I was like, whatever. I'm like, it's worth taking this risk right now, and I can just revive if I die. Um, I don't know I if you think... saw this, Amber, but I got crit by Earthquake. And that's what put me at like 18 HP. Oh, I did see. I did see that. Yeah. Like, like that. That was such a weird thing because, like, yeah, I played the last. I I feel a little scummy for playing the the E4 safe with the two controller strats. No, you were. But you were I definitely took ahead, my fair share ahead. of risks, like through the run. Like I one controller Naomi. Yeah. Uh, I I did two. I did plus four on Lorelei, so I did have to go for a hydro pump. I did that too. I missed mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the only reason why I ended up in a faint range because the I got I had forty eight health going into Bruno, got earthquake down to five, 
and then leveled up to seven. <laughs> now, we haven't even talked about like T-Pat's like hype moment getting frozen on Caroline and the skull. Oh, right. That was the that best thing. Okay. 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 <laughs> so I typed in power in chat because all I could think of was the, the guy from My Hero Academia <laughs> yes. that just <laughs> roars through and he's like, power! <laughs> because like, talk about a magical critical hit. You could have like to bust out of freeze and crit in the same turn, I'd like that had never happened. That was the only thing I could think of in that moment. I was laughing so hard. I was like, I have to share this moment with chat. <laughs> yeah, you effectively just like that was just a normal Caroline fight for you at that point. No <laughs> turns lost, no time lost. Think of how many times you've done predictions in chat if anybody gets frozen on Caroline and it's always no. And that was like the only one that there wasn't a prediction there exactly. for. Exactly. <laughs> I would have made so many channel points. <laughs> God, gosh, I just wish I could like hug everybody right now. Virtual hug. Virtual yeah, uh, best I can do is do a hug and chat then. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that is going to conclude the 2024 uh, Let's Go Any Percent tournament. Uh, if anybody in chat uh, likes what they saw, uh, you can always join the Pokemon speedrunning Discord or the Switch speedrunning Discord uh, or the Let's Go Discord, uh, the Let's Go Race Discord. Uh, you know, we're always willing to help out, always willing to teach new people how to how to kind of play this game as fast as we do. Uh, I, I'm not as fast as any of these three runners, but uh, you know, I'm sure all three of them be more than willing to help you learn this game. Um, so yeah, that's do uh... diploma with us. <laughs> <laughs> I we'll actually have to do a Let's Go race this year at uh, at GDQ. We didn't get to do one at SGDQ this year. We even had a, we even had a channel for it in the the GDQ Discord. <laughs> like no one no one wanted to do one. Well, we'll That's because none that of us in. wanted to play Head Bob, who PB'd at GDQ. That was pretty yeah, that's nice. true. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can find our, our mods are linking all of the, the respective discords and links below. Go ahead and check check all that out. The PSR community is absolutely fantastic. I've had a blast being here and, and commenting with you all and watching all of these fantastic races unfold. It's been an absolute blast and honor to be here with you all. Can, can I just say that I think everybody should watch PSR Marathon you're so well, right. Speaking, when is that happening? Speaking right? of the CSR marathon, we are joined <laughs> uh, by our tech lead, uh, Fearist, to tell us about the PSR marathon. Hello. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, GGs to you, everyone. Um, that was a great race, um, and I'm kind of upset that you just spoiled what, what, what we're about to <laughs> talk about for a while. <laughs> That's you fine, had I guess. one job, Sajay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but before we move to that, uh, and we also have a credits video, which you may want to look out for, that Sajay kindly prepared. Uh, but before that, I just want to say like a couple of words about the tournament. Um, so obviously, a huge thank you to all the other organizers, um, as well as the tech team. There were like 41 races that we all like ended up streaming. Uh, there was a lot of work put into all of this, um, so a huge thank you. Uh, this kind of events are never possible without the help of like the community. Um, SciJ, thank you for the layouts. They looked really good. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. Thank you to everyone who did comms, everyone who participated as a runner, everyone who watched at home, um, everyone who contributed to the prize pool. And yeah, it was... This kind of events like really show what the community is all about. Um, and yeah, they're a lot of fun for all sorts of people, whether you're a top runner, whether you're like getting started with the game. I think a, lo a lot of people this year uh, had fun. Uh, so yeah, shout out to everyone. And yeah, with that, I am going to move to the thing that everyone already spoiled. And we'll see you in a second. We're back. Um, so that was the trailer for the PSR Marathon 2024. 
um, which is happening from August 2nd to August 5th. Uh, huge shout out to Blue Magma for making the trailer and to Alba for making the artwork that you are seeing here. And they're also going to be helping uh, with other art stuff uh, during the marathon. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's actually a lot of let's go in the, in the marathon. So if you enjoyed the tournament, there's still going to be quite a bit of let's go there. Uh, not really the category that you saw, but cooler stuff, I think. Um, but yeah, that should be it from us. Does anyone, you can, you can still be heard. So if you want to say anything, <laughs> if yeah, not, I mean, tune, tune into the PSR marathon, uh, August 2nd to 5th. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Um, I, I unfortunately will be out of town for it, so I'll be watching along on Twitch. Um, maybe, maybe maybe one one year it won't coincide with uh, Worlds for me. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, every, everybody should just watch the marathon. It's just going to be so much fun. Uh, and I personally am looking forward to that. And uh, just as a final thing, I just wanted to say thanks again to everybody that was uh, putting on the tournament that to everybody that helped and participated, uh, it was uh, it's it was just as fun as it was last last year to see so many new faces and old faces all at the same time and and uh, again GGs to everybody, especially Amber and Headstrong. And shoutouts again to to you, Furious, for being such an integral part of the the process and getting the Let's Go tournament off the ground this year. So thank you very much for everything that you've done. Furious, you genuinely like the glue that held everything together. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we get to have more fun in a couple of weeks uh, with PSR Marathon. And yeah, with that, we're gonna roll the credits. Uh, Shout out again to Sajay for making those. Um, they look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with that, thank you once again for watching. And we'll see you at the PSR Marathon.